Yo, see yo. you. We back. back we just, again, we just, back we just again. over here doing um, Wi Fi passwords and that. Ah? Yeah. Just yeah, that's usually the case when we've got someone new in the room. Just trying to pattern up Chris quickly and that. Oh, yeah? Because, bro, we're, we're in the dungeon here, bro. No reception. If, if, if they kidnap us, <laughs> it's all over, bro. Do you know what? I hate venues, yeah, where you go inside and there's no reception. But you always see it's, it's a hazard. hazard. You see, the, you, see yeah. the ba- you see the babies in Snapchat and saving them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you. Let me tell you yeah. something about venues with no reception in them. What I don't like is when you you're going to pay for something and there's no reception. You know, you need to transfer a P from one account yeah. to another account, yeah. and there's no reception down there. Yeah, and you have to be like, oh, hold on, let now me just go outside. Hold your phone like this. You hold your phone like this. You have to like, I just go outside quickly, like. Bro. Now the lady's looking. She's holding. She's holding your drinks like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, she put the drinks to the side, didn't it? Yeah. And you're like, I'll be. I'll be back. I'm back in ten. <laughs> Bro, I, w- I was at um, a party once. Yeah, at one bar, and then um, they had the card machine in it. Like, okay. Trying to pay in that, and they're like, "Ah, oh, there's something wrong with the, with the, the signal on the machine." So like, they're at the bar, just like lifting Directing it up. Traffic, like, oh, do right. you know what I'm saying? Trying to get some signal. And then they try to go into the other room, still can't get signal. Yeah. And they were like, do you know what? Just, it's on the house. Yeah, just I would, like I would have ordered seven more drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I had um, ordered three drinks. Yeah. So they were just like, yeah, it's on the house. Like, <laughs> that's <laughs> a result, you know. <laughs> <laughs> really didn't want to buy this but the cashless thing is messing up a lot. Like, that's, that's like, the what? Like, cashless. A lot of places, like, mm. obviously people carry cash, but like, I, like you've got your Apple Pay. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? So, like, we're used to not having cash on us, isn't it? Yeah. And obviously now it's kind of like, soft and a little bit when we first come out of lockdown mm. it's kind of people don't want to like take people's money and like, ideally just tap and want to have minimal contact in it so mm. those things probably affect it as well isn't it yeah me i like cash yeah <laughs> run nah, the piece, it's got germs on it it's got germs on it man <laughs> no no run run well, the the new joints <laughs> new the, joint the, old the, joint the shiny ones <laughs> any joint bro, bro. Do you like them new no- notes as um, opposed to the old ones i mean there was a time period where like the the fakes were flying about so i think these new ones are making it kind of harder for the man them isn't wow. it so <laughs> I wasn't expecting that angle, but you know. Sorry, you know, I was being a bit too honest with it, so I think it's making it harder for the guys that you know. I f- I found that like um, I was losing them a lot. Oh, what the the new ones? The new ones because they're just you were like losing slippery. money. I would love to be that rich. I don't lose money. Nah. Not, even, <laughs> not even five pounds. <laughs> man. Nah, like in the house, Can you see my rich friends? In the house, nah. man. Nah. Money in the house How can that? you just Chill lose out. money like that? Just lose a pinky and just forget where it is? Nah, you Man's starting like, massive pinky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like mad high. <laughs> like, talk about them fibers. Because they're tiny, in it as yeah. well. So like, and sometimes it's stuck to the surface of my phone. Like, so if I pull yeah. it out and just... <laughs> Don't don't even realize. You're so I never saw a question. Yeah, you just go check your your, your daughter's piggy bank. That's probably hella fibers in there. Bro. Oh my gosh, bro! Like um, the other day, yeah, um, she's got this little purse in it. Mm. I didn't think anything of it, bro. She opened it and there's bare cash in there. Come on, yeah. And she get like, into the bag. What do you think this is? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you're in your bag. Who do you think shot in the Capri Suns at school is her, bro? <laughs> bro, she was just. So what, how, like, what did you do? Or just just you can have that. Hold that. Yeah, yeah hold that. It's hers, man. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Man, man start taxing her early, though. Man said, you know, this like, is You know, back in the day, like, when your uncle would give you peas and uh, your mum would be like, let yeah, me keep let me it hold for that. You. That's what I thought <laughs> you would do to be. Like, I thought, I, nah, I, I, nah, 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 I'll just keep it. Man, That's you just cool. see your mum put the money, she have puts it in her pocket, she puts it here in her bra, money's gone, bro. Gone. I, 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 like, you just look at the money like, yeah, done, bro. My like, parents would be like, oh, let me hold it. And I'm like, nah, like, let it go to its intended recipient. Yeah, no, no, so you're, never, you're never getting that. I was gonna ask you, yeah, see when you said the money will start to your phone, like when you take out your pocket, let me yeah. ask you, say it's windy outside, mm. and you bring out your pocket and you see a five will just go flying off your phone. Are you gonna chase it, or are you gonna let it go? It depends where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> you see, ego, pride. Bro, and safety, in it. If it's like on a main road, like a, Busy junction, I'm. It's so gone. You're not risking getting knocked over for a five on. Nah. Come on, I hear it still. Yeah, no. I'm good, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm chasing that five. Because <laughs> I take everything as an affront to me personally, like, bro. <laughs> and now I think no, I lost. That's an L. I lost five pounds, bro. Yeah, and, and nature's mugging you off. Yeah, because the wind just keeps on blowing it, bro. As you get closer, it blows again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's, it's the reaching. When you're reaching, yeah. for it, it's just oh. No. It's like those stupid things like when you're when you when you like you're waiting for a bus or something or like you could run but you don't want to be caught running and then like miss the bus or that like and you know the drivers they don't play around they're just they're off you just stand the bus up like bro I ran for the bus the other day gave myself an ick <laughs> <laughs> I was an ick you're not serious bro 
There's no way to bro running for the bus as a big grown man with dignity. There's no way to do it. Set the scene. Did you have rucksack on? I did. <laughs> bro, <laughs> <laughs> my keys and that just making mad noise. I've got two laptops in the bag, bro. heavy rucksack. Uh, bro, I was determined to make it. Yeah. Did you have bass straps on? What do you mean? On the backpack. Like both of them over your shoulders. Yeah, if I need to get mad. to. <laughs> the... yeah. Bro, I, well, I need to get to that bus. Because when I started running, yeah, I'm like, I've got to make it now. So mm. wait, we're like out of breath when you go on the bus. Like, <gasps> yeah, absolutely yeah. out of breath. Were you sweating as well? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah, that's why I get myself it's the ick. You just sat there like, yeah, I, I, was I, like, I understand. Nah, Imagine you looked up as you got on the bus and you saw a baby rider just looking at you. Washed. With your rucksack, shiny forehead. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mad. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. As if somebody shouldn't go to work. Look, look at life we're living, you know what I'm bro. saying? Like, Boy. man's trying to, you, you know, save money and that. Now, if you're late now, it's a bigger issue, man. <laughs> get to work, man. Cause, nah, because sometimes I prefer the bus going home because the tube sometimes is unbearable. Bro, look how hot mm. it is right. I couldn't imagine being on a tube on a day like this, mm. bro. It's disgusting. In the tube, I yeah. can smell so many people. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 It's I mean, literally it's odor wars, bro. That's an odor wars. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to people that bath regularly in it, so. I, I, yeah, I can't do the tube at the minute. Mm. Yeah. And people are on the central line right now, peak. That's <laughs> the line I was on. People don't bath, bro. Like, I don't know where these um, statistics came from, but it's been out there that what was it? Donnies don't go, don't change their oh, sheets. Oh yeah, I, I saw the article, man. I, after I'm like convinced. four four months, what? I'm convinced Every, it's not random. No, it's not random. It's uh, it's not it's random. It's, it's a different demographic. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say man, that. Oh, man, it's not man, random. Man, it's the not, PC where it's saying white. It's not the man <laughs> that mandem. do this. Yeah. Four months. Four months. I'm not changing your you sheets. Know, there's, that's a third of the year. Yeah. Bro, I got that eggs, man. You can't, bro. you can't risk it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro every five days, bro. Bed skin residue. There's certain the man eating the eating the bed as well. So it's just like when the crumbs. Bed bugs. Is oh, bro. god damn, bro. That's insane. Like, it's not random. It's not random. And, and they were saying that you know, um, a large population of Brits don't wash their legs. Their legs. Yeah, oh. they neglect the legs. Yeah. Fifty percent of their body. It's mad. <laughs> <laughs> and my man, man did the stat for us quickly, like just to make sure. Like. Bro, I'm like, why, like, why? What's the logic behind that? It doesn't I don't make know. Any sense. Imagine you go, you got a flannel or your sponge, or whatever. And you just it'll, stop. It'll, stop it'll, it'll probably be you harder by your to waist be in the and... bath to not wash your legs than to. Do you know what the reasoning is? They say that when you like lather up the top half of your body, yeah. the soap runs down, no. so no. it's like self cleaning. No. Like, way. It's not me that said it. Hmm. But that's the logic. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, hmm, do you wash your leg? Oh my God. <laughs> Every day. That's crazy, man. But it's kind of like I know people, yeah, that are like they don't cream their whole body; they just cream the bits that people are gonna see, the visible parts. And I'm like, that's wayward. Ooh, friends, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> what are you saying? Is that what you do? No, no, no. You said you're not gonna lie. Nah, 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 nah. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Like you said, Dwayne is. Man, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> Where you're in a rush for man, work. Man, man, man looks at me. I said, like, Where you you're in a rush for work. Yeah. Something's got to get sometimes, man. No, I do. I listen, that. If, you, if, you, if it's this bit's on show. When I'm, if, I'm, if I know I'm late, I'm late. I hear it. I hear we it. know you and yeah, lateness. Right? You're committed to it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it, it's a lifestyle. Oh, yeah, trying, to, no. trying, to, trying to do best, though. <laughs> Brother, he's going to come to next week, like half eight, and I'll be like, sorry, guys. I trust him anyway, innit? So. But yeah. <laughs> If you're, if you're rushing, you're rushing, but cream yourself, innit? Like, yeah. Bro. Something's got to get sometimes, man. Just let me get out of the house. Well, yeah. like, cream your face as you walk cream out. Cream my face. Now nah, you're at the cream bus stop, you got cream hair in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's when it's your bit is little white Bro, I've tweets. seen people like at the bus stop creaming their face. Facts. You see it, like you see That's women do their makeup on the train and that and yeah, stuff, so. Elite yeah. skills. Be like that. Like when the things all shaking and that, but they're still like Perfect. precise. Yeah. First, yeah. First and I'm like, how, bruv? Like, these are scientists. <laughs> Magicians, even. <laughs> it's yeah, it's the white women in the wet hair. That's the one that just really upsets my soul. Wet hair? Yeah. Do you never see them? As in wet hair on the tube? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Tube strain, you name it. Wow. That's how you catch a cold, don't it? That's damn invincible. Yeah, yeah, leave your house with a wet head. That's, that's crazy. I mean, Crazy knows no bounds with Karen's. There we go. Well, I'm happy to be back anyway. Yeah, we can get off the whites. Come on, because it, it was getting uncomfortable. Oh, I wasn't uncomfortable. No, no. Just Chrissy's just... back. Hey, Chrissy Hive. Nice Hi, to have everyone. you back. Thanks. How are the shakes treating you? 
don't start with me, follow me. I'm not in the mood. You're in the mood? I'm not in the mood. That's usually the best way to get me. You're not in the mood. <laughs> and I'm in the mood. <laughs> um, no, I didn't see any shake. Well, I saw lots of shakes, but I had no dealings with any shakes. Okay. Is that just the disclaimer? Yeah. Just Are you going to tell a different there. story off air? Or? Shut up. Okay, cool. No. So you had a good yeah. time, yeah? It's fantastic. Just you relax. and the pee in that shop. Yeah, she wanted to yeah. make sure, yeah. Full stop. Yeah, she wanted to make sure that. <laughs> try, to, try to keep her reputation clean out here, mm. it? So. Yeah, necessary. Don't yeah. spoil my market. Um, no, I had a whale of a time. So much fun. The weather was perfect, not too hot. Not too. Yeah, but they have AC everywhere, so you have to calm down that you don't, you know, catch your sort of truth. Mm hmm. But um, yeah, I had, a, I had a great time. No holiday romance, no? No, stop this. I was just trying to load the agenda, innit? A lot of them. I thought it was going to come out with Brazy Stories for us, bro. No. Like, yeah, it's nice. Short. I got to relax. I got a tan. Anything else? <laughs> Did you meet a husband? Can we get no. some Can we get some juicy gist, There bro? was a night um, we went out to eat, and um, one of the waiters comes up to us and says, Excuse me, ma'am. There's a gentleman that would like to come over and speak to you. But Jeez. they, like, he didn't want to just come over. So, you know, you're like, Okay. So the guy comes over, and he's like, Hi. Do you want, it's like hi do you mind if I sit down it's like okay it's giving good energy lovely he sits down Jesus Christ that man was so dry he said seven words probably the whole time he was sat there he said seven words and the bit that upset my soul the most is he ordered himself a drink <laughs> But what was you lot's energy like? Yeah, what, what like, energy was you? Sometimes, was... like, you know, man will try and come chat to you and that, and the energy is just off. So it's like, rah, you're not giving me much to say. We here. were actually trying to have conversation with him because you think you've made all the effort to, to come over here to do all of this. Yeah. And you just. Yeah, so he set pace. It's on you lot too, you know? So we were asking him about what he does. He was telling us about his business, but the answers man were. Man, so... the money first, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the <laughs> personality. Six figure business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. You're so the boring don't. He, um,. So we were asking him about what he does and the answers were just so, like, that dry. That a human trafficker, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And he was even Nigerian. Oh, so, no, don't do that. Don't you know, no. no, so you know when you think, okay, that's at least, because my friend that I went with, she's Nigerian as well. Oh, so we've got you know, something you think, in common. We've got something in common. Ooh, and he was Afrobeats. like, oh, have you ever been to Nigeria? I was like, yeah, I've been a few times. I spoke about the time we went. He was like, okay. Is that it? Then he ordered himself a lemonade. I said to Aunt, let's be finishing our sushi and go because what is this? You he come didn't over ask here. You guys want a drink? He get, and he, he specifically went like, yeah, what did you do? You mean like, ew. <laughs> Damn. Ew. Donnie made sure this ain't about you lot. It's a for me. So man just went there for no reason. So you just want to sit with fine babes. It's giving weird. Well, maybe maybe he pulled up and got nervous, isn't it? So oh. when we were leaving, so we finished our food, finished our drinks and we we're like, okay, it was nice to meet you. And he was like, oh, you're going? What? Why would we stay here? Like, what is appealing about this situation? The Nothing. business, isn't it? Mum's going to give you, like, the breakdown of the business. Hopefully, you lot, you know, you jump out the bait and that. He's a rich man. No. Nah. He wasn't giving rich man anything. You can't have dead chat. Fair. That's like, what, what are we going to do? Just look at each other. Dead. <sighs> dead. Dead. Not for me. I'm really sorry about your terrible ordeal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Even though you're taking an absolute piss. And a well, lot don't of look at me. Yes. <laughs> A lot of the men there. <laughs> this sounds hella sad. <laughs> I was telling Foles that a lot of the men there, like, they're shorter than him. How do you get here? Yeah. Shorter than him, shorter than him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so go, go, go over there. I'm trying to always know. What Maybe what you said, if I go over there, I'm six foot two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mad. And they all have babes as well, fine babes. So I was like, there's hope for you, bro. Wow. You can wow. do this. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rise to that. I hear you. If there's one thing we know about me, I'm gonna find myself a fine babe, so. Oh. History is proven. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. a bit of a pause there. No, no, I can't like agree to you, Tuffy, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, you can agree. <laughs> it's safe, you can agree. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, don't worry. It's safe territory in that. Chris, you push your. <laughs> you back here. Back, baby. Uh, yeah, well, from yeah, from one Chris to another Chris. Whenever. Hashtag off the cuff pod. Come on. We are back. A good honest conversation. Never hurt anyone. Yes. If you're listening for the first week, my name is False Forever. Mr. Vance. And uh, you've heard already, Chrissy's here. Hello. Chrissy Hive. As I said, from one Chris to another Chris. Hi. 
I said, hi, you know. <laughs> Finally, I know you went for us to introduce you. And it's like, you no, no, no. I just want well, to natural flow in. Yeah, what's up? Mm. What the vibe was? Shut off too tough. Should I just hold it back? Or no, no, be yourself, man. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like you being We're like here now, man. Yeah. He's, he's done a pod before. Yeah. Yeah. That's my first time I'm shy, man, guys. Nah, don't <laughs> do that. <laughs> yeah. Don't do I'm that. Shy. Chris Topper's here. Thanks mm. for coming down, my bro. Chris underscore Topper. There we go. I had to. Chris hit me like, yeah, it's time, man. You know, yeah. you know, you see, each, you, you don't see each other often, but when you see each other, yeah, you good man has the family. Yeah. So obviously, when you when we saying about the podcast, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that well, usually comes shortly after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, we've been like two or three sentences. It's, it's podcast related, yeah. Isn't it? So yeah. Yeah. when a man hit me, I was like, okay, cool, now he's ready. We can do it. Nah, you know what? Yeah, I generally don't go on people's podcasts or any any other people, any other person shows or anything. Yeah. I just tend to stay away from it. I don't really like it, but you guys have always shown me loving it since I met yeah. you. So I was like, you know what, Chris, come out of comfort zone, go speak to these lot. Love and that. that's ended up here. So these lot, wow. <laughs> yeah, no, don't, even, don't even. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> don't even. <laughs> nah, Chris is a real one though. He yeah. always like reposts um, the pod on on Insta. Like always. And people people think like whether you, whether you listen on those things, they help. They help, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like, everyone's got a different part to play in that. Absolutely. Oh yeah, I think it's important that we share each other, each other stuff, and we yeah. always just put ourselves out there because you never know who's looking at anyone's stories or who's looking at. He's going to look he's looking for my feed or something. So Facts. You, you meet the person that you need to connect to that's going to bring you to where you need to be in the future, I guess. Yeah. Could be just seen by a repost or a retweet. No, that's true. Or something. So that's just my mentality towards these things. There's no, nothing much to it. We want to man I'm in a big so. group chat with that I've known for like years from church. He's like, bro, I'm going to lie to you, bro. <laughs> I listened to one episode. Mm. This is off the back of the wedding. Yeah, we were right, right, right. And then they listened last week and obviously was talking about the wedding and stuff. So... Hopefully it stays every week now, isn't it? So yeah. bro, each their own. How do you feel so. about that stuff though? When, when you hear that piece, people around you don't I don't want to punch my nut, but you know. <laughs> 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 now when, when, I, when I'm not being emotional now, you know, I just like brother, it is what it is, man. Like mm. everyone bro, some things are not for some people don't like long form chat. Like mm. one of our just hit me yesterday and was like, Oh, why don't you like cut up some of your content in terms of YouTube? Because sometimes I can't necessarily like sit through an hour and a half, two hour episode, isn't it? And funnily enough, the day before, I had cut up like quite a few. The last, mm-hmm. the last we had um, Daniel on it, the DB captures on it. So I cut up quite a few different clips and that. So, bro, mm. people consume stuff in a different way. Some people just they kind of forget. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it's yeah. like it's that thing you do, but it's like when we hang out, when we talk, we don't talk about that. Mm. And I don't really press people too much about mm-hmm, stuff. So mm-hmm. and I haven't always been good like that. Like mm-hmm. before, I did take a little bit personal. Like, right, I see you reposting my man's thing. He's a fucking leak, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't not posting my thing, bro. I'm the realist. Yeah. <laughs> I, think it's, I, I, I think it's like perfectly natural to have those feelings at first. Yeah. Like, mm. um, because the feelings are your feelings, isn't it? Like you've created something and you want your people to just naturally support you. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, because to you, it goes a long way. But I think like, you know, it's difficult to to make everyone be on board with what you're doing. Like, you know, people could be proud of you, but they're not necessarily that way inclined. Like, they're not a podcast person. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, your brothers can't, can't always be them. your consumer. Like, do you know what I'm absolutely, saying? Like, so yeah. Just be my friend. I think that's, that's like, enough, isn't it? Yeah. Just from a mental space, like, once you let that go, like, you progress even further. Yeah. That's do you right. know what I'm saying? Because, like, your energy is just, towards you building whatever you, you're doing to, to the best that it, it can be. Like friends that wasn't listening in the beginning, mm. then started listening later on down the line. Like I'm not gonna hold them to it just because they weren't listening mm. from episode one. Do you know what I mean? Like they they came on board like um, by the end of it, they started seeing other people champion it. So naturally they're gonna be like, oh, l- let me give it a listen. Let me add it to that my always That always happens. People double back, they see playlist. other people talking about you. And like I said, it's not my bad place. They just kind of, oh shit, bro, let me, like, mm. I've always, it's always Turns been Turns out let they me. love this shit. Yeah. So I cannot complain mm. at all. Like, I'm just grateful for every listener that we have. Yeah. Every, any supporter that we have, like whether it comes in the form of a repost, a retweet, a like, do you know what I'm saying? You're doing something where you're taking it beyond yourself, mm-hmm. innit? Mm-hmm. So, can't complain, man. Yeah, speaking of love, though, if you really want to show us love, <laughs> man, one rave, innit? Man, one rave, <laughs> yeah, bro. It's a good segue, bro. Like we're yeah. back, we're outside again. Yeah, we got another, we've got another dance we're throwing on Friday the third of June, Bank Holiday weekend. Yeah, man. So there's no work. You Queen, know. Queen's Jubilee, bro. We don't care about all that stuff, bro. So this, we're outside for us, bro. I hear we're that, but queen, you know, we got, we got to thank that for this that day. Okay, cool. Thanks to, thank you to the Queen for still being around and giving us the extra day off with it. So we'll take it. 
Um, we were raving at um, Four Quarters East. Yeah. Magni Wick, Canal Side. So come out, come and vibe. Cheap Take venue, man. Vibe. Yeah, yeah. Proper nice venue. Got a nice outside spot as well. Ticket link will be in the bar. There's a few early bird tickets as we're recording now. Mm. It might be gone by the time this is out. So, you know, you snooze, you lose, bro. Yeah, if you missed out on the last one, this is the perfect opportunity to come out. It's on a Friday, um, you know, so we're going to be lit. Chris, you're going to be there? Yeah, on you time go- as well. On time as well. I'm even going to be on the door. You're going to be on the door? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't let you handle none of the money. <laughs> <laughs> Good sky, <guy>, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the, I'm the, I am the king of micro managing. Last, last time, Michael Seaman was there with a the list. Yeah, cool. You got a ticket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cash payments? Yeah, yeah. yeah no games, bro. <laughs> I'll be there on time. <laughs> but more than anything, I just want to have a good time. I want to party with everyone a lot earlier than last time as well. So hopefully things will definitely go a bit smoother than last time. So Yeah, man. Yeah, and if you was there, you saw the vibes. I know you've seen all the content, all the stuff you put out there. Everyone yeah, it was good vibes, man. Video. Everyone really enjoyed themselves. Like the feedback was amazing. Um, you know, shout outs to all the listeners that came as well. Yeah. We want to see you there again. Absolutely, if man. If you didn't come, like, don't lack this time. Yeah. Don't lack. What are you That's doing for the June? Yeah, you're coming, bro. No, no, no. I've got my daughter. I've got my daughter. Oh, don't do I, I that, bro. To, I had don't. to. I had to. Oh, I'm, I'm already sorry, doing bro. this guy, bro. Don't do start, that, bro. Because there's Jeez. no comeback for that for me. What so, can yeah, I say? I know. What can it's, I say? It's, it's, I can't uh, Vans, you know, innit? There's yeah, it's no, a cheat but, code, bro. But well, honestly speaking, I'm actually my daughter that weekend. Yeah. It's my birthday. My, forget it's my birthday, the weekend, the week, weekend after. Okay, okay. It's going to be hard to even swap. So. No, no, you know, I hear you. So. <laughs> that, that, one, that one, you've got to manage on well because the battle some of you, I hear some of you having to do with like. Especially if your guy that's outside and your your child's mum knows that you're outside and she might be outside as well. You're both battling for bank holiday weekends. <laughs> 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 oh, what, there's DLT? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. She, she, she. Uh, it's so peak, especially <laughs> if you're both like, you're both young and fly, both trying to enjoy your life. She's like, yeah, hold, hold, hold the children this week, isn't it? Mm. And, then the, and then the weekend, the weekend you want to go, that's when the weekend everything's on. Man. Yeah, she's having, she's having a whale of a time. Still see me pop up. Actually, <laughs> 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 so, you know, you got a good support network and, and yeah. grandma's around, yeah, or yeah. the younger brothers yeah, there, yeah, and that. Yeah. Listen, the kids go to bed at like eight, nine o'clock, bro. I don't need to be there with them. Everyone else in the house, isn't it? Let me go outside, isn't it? Yeah. But it just so happens that I've got a clingy daughter. Oh, so you can't even. She be on to you, isn't it? She wake up, she don't see you there. Facetime immediately. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Always yeah. looking for me. Always looking for me. Oh, my daughter's independent, man. I could leave her to with my sister just somehow. And she's yeah. like, oh, bye, daddy. Now, I like you, yeah. I see my, my sister's been down recently. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing, brother. I always, I'm always in for like, our baby free weekend. It's like, yeah, later. Yeah. yeah. Like, my mom, my sister, if I'm around, but them two always. Bro, it's needed. As parents, like, you know, you know, we're still young and stuff. So it's needed sometimes, like, where, you know, the support is there. Mm. So you can go off and do things that, you know, because. The parents, parenting is a constant. Yeah. yeah it, bruv, th- those weekends probably help you parent better. Yeah. You go on flex and enjoy yourself and you come out Monday refreshed. Yeah, it's, even, it's an opportunity for you just to be yourself. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Even like on on my days, my regular days when she's at school, sometimes I'm just wondering what she's doing at school. Or like, if bro, the school calls me- she's making them Capri Suns fly, bro. You saw the first. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> if the school calls me, yeah, my heart jumps immediately. Cause you just think it's bad news. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that yeah. I'm not ready for. Like it would. Like she I'm gonna have to phone you for advice. That like, oh, someone's son, daughter, bro. I'm kicking down something, bro. Like yeah. uh, we're not beating up toddlers, but someone has to feel this pain, <laughs> yeah. bro. I, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I've been on the playground and someone's son pushes your door. Ah, oh, nah, 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 nah. We're fighting, bro. Yeah, I've That's... seen many fight on the uh, on the school playground with parents and that. Our primary schools, I'm really for that at the gate. So sometimes you come across parents that um don't want to accept. That their child is an asshole. Yeah, because it's an affront to them, isn't it? Because it's yeah, it's, it's basically your, your bad parent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry to say, but you know, Billy would never. Billy some did. Ki- some kids are bad vibes. No, they are. Yeah, and yeah, yeah it, pull, your, pull your mic down just here. Yeah, it's just funny, man. When when you know you've got a bad child, sometimes it, like there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do about it. And I'm just like, wow, well, there actually really isn't anything you can do about it. You just have to firm. We're going to beat your kids, send them away. Beat what that kid, man. Yeah. <laughs> what are you actually going to do? Well, that the beat that you get so far, you know. Like, what can you actually do when you got a bad child? I was going to say, bro, I've, there's one you use a rapper now, isn't it? 
He was bad. They, sent, they sent him to Jamaica. He got worse. They had to send him back. <laughs> <laughs> I was really, bro. He was he, he, um, my next door neighbor. There, I think their grandson. He stapled his hand in it in our, in our school. With that, like, he was unruly in school. Yeah. Then, bro, no, no, this is why, like, man. When you hear of a deadbeat, sometimes hear them out. <laughs> the use bad vibes. Well, saying, like, Dave's got a, a good reason to be Hear them <laughs> out, man. Bro, he stapled his hand, yeah? Then they sent the shoot to Jamaica. They said that he locked down the school in Jamaica. He was such a problem. They had to send him back to the UK. <laughs> but how can you be that bad, bro? That's nuts. Yeah, you're a bad child. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, as, as you know, history will have it, Donnie joined PYG and the rest is history. <laughs> 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 yeah, some oh, kids. Yeah, Hor- horrible, horrible. I, like, when I think about like my my school days, I'm like, yeah, you're where you are now. We, the writing was on the wall, and it was always mm. it was written for you, man. Mm. Some kids like you do if, if when you know their their the actual um, family background, what was going in their house, and you find out, you do feel for them because like they almost like they didn't have a chance. Mm. You know, those are the man that scream as adults. You weren't bad in school. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> I was paying attention, bro. <laughs> was, uh, when, when, when you was in school, I was in conch. Sucks to be you, bro. Oh, <laughs> uh, mate. Well, I was speaking of prayer, and you want to should we get onto your, your platform and, and and what you do? And part of the reason why you probably don't need to podcast and guest on other people's stuff. Oh, I like, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's talk about it, man. So my part was called Figuring Out Fatherhood. I already post I talk about it a lot of the time. So if you miss, if you missed it. I don't know how. Go to my, go to my Instagram, go to my Twitter, it's Chris underscore Topper. But um, Figuring Out Fatherhood is a platform where we talk about men's experiences, right? Like, every dad has a different story to tell. Like, you call them a deadbeat, could be in prison, could be anywhere in the world. You can even be away from your child, but there is a story behind it. And I want to hear it. I want to hear what people have to say about their experiences as, as dads. That's what it comes down to, really. And um, what can we learn from it? Because I'm a firm believer in nothing is new under the sun. Yeah, a lot of things that we're going through, a lot of things that we've experienced, people have experienced it already, and it's there for us to learn from already. We just need to go and do the work, go do the research, go read, go watch things, go increase knowledge. And I guess this is just me trying to play my part by sharing stories that people have to tell, and that way you can watch it and learn from it, mm. and the process build a community as well. Is that um, did this interest come about when you became a father, or did you want to? Did you always have this perspective um, pre becoming a father? So there's multiple strands to it, right? I know a lot of, a lot of dads will tie their life changing experience to having a child, but I realized that I'm just where I'm meant to be at this point in time. Um, growing up, I've always, put, growing up, I didn't have, really have like hobbies and stuff. I just sort of just went with the wind, wherever the wind blew and stuff. And yeah. around about the time when I was like 26, 27, I was like, you know what, let me find something that I actually want to do for myself. I want to. Mm. But I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so right, I was right, trying right. different things. And it coincided with me having a child. Mm. And I was like, you know what? Let me give let me have a go at putting out content. What kind of content what am I enjoying at the moment? Being a dad, figuring out how that's how it came about. So from there it was just like, you know what? It's all evolved. So initially we just to p- talk about different topics, which you featured on season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then I was like, you no, know, I actually want to hear what people have to say about their journeys as well. And in the process, I also wanted to learn how to edit videos, edit content. I wanted to learn how to record content and stuff like that. So yeah. it was just, it just all kind of came together to become Figuring Out Fatherhood. But um, it as a platform itself, um, I guess as I grew up and the more dads I spoke to, the more I realized that we don't have, or a lot of us don't have much of a community around us in terms of like, we have people around us that we can talk to like our friends, but we don't share knowledge with regards to fatherhood. You yeah. don't share tips. As yeah. Things like, how are you able to navigate, say for example, how are you able to navigate, say your salary is 1,500 pounds and you pay this much rent. How are you able to navigate your finances with regards to that? How are you able to be calm and keep your child's mother cool? You knowing that you're not providing as much as other people are providing and stuff like that. You're not providing what she needs. Yeah. Things like that or- Go hit the strip, bro. Like, <laughs> That's that's what that's what yeah. man have to consider that, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You got bro, a bag five hundred, you paid your rent, and she's telling you that school fees is like six bills. Oh, <laughs> bro, something's got to give, bro. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying. So it's just like if you have someone else that's been through already, they can ask. Yeah, it's a reference point for you. Yeah, and that's just about. I saw. You have to start doing a daddy partner. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that's what actually it, a good idea, you bro? Know. You got to start doing yeah, a daddy yeah, partner. Yeah. But everyone, uh, bro, a couple of bills each a month. Mm. Do you know what it is like? And you know, I, I completely get where you're coming from. Your point, um, and um, you know why you created this. Um, 
when you say that like you know there wasn't really like a, a community mm. where you know we can learn from each other it's it's all well and good like when one of my boys was the first one to have a kid and then he went and had another one mm. before any of the other man them even considered it it was it must have been hard for him because like there's no one else that mm. you can kind of relate to and like I wasn't really trying to hear all that, mm. <laughs> to be honest. Mm. Like, be popping, at, the, at the time, mm-hmm. do you know what of I mean? Course, because yeah. like I didn't see it in the near future. So like, it becomes like the first one always has to go through the trenches like, yeah. first and then, but then when I had mine, Donnie didn't pass down no knowledge. Yeah. So it's like, if anything, started learning from me. Yeah. You know, so it's like, Rah, like with all those years of experience, man couldn't, do you know what I mean? Like I had to- It's not even just that as well. You're also at risk of getting bad advice. When it's just one yeah. person in your community, yeah. if that person's feeding you bad advice, like if you're the kind of person that takes things literally or you don't necessarily think for yourself, and they do exist, men as well, let's never get it twisted. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. You can't think for yourself. You can't decipher what's good information, what's bad information. Or you end up following the wrong path or something. That's less likely to happen if you've got a community of people with different opinions and some are more experienced, there's some less experienced, some actually think. Yeah. But when you have people that don't think, pass now advice, I think that's actually more detrimental. So yeah. I wouldn't be mad at him having nothing to say. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, if, I, if he no, said no, so, no. yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You might not be here, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Is that like, I, I always kind of just went with my gut or like, you know, with how I feel things should run in it and like, I was blessed enough to have um, uh, a child with someone who was mm. equally as understanding. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like, so um, yeah, you're gonna bump heads for the most, like, for not the most part. I the like, most part, you know, Jesus sometimes, Christ. But for the most part, mm. you're um, in sync with mm. how things go in it. Like, and like, it's very difficult when you have your kid and you've got big families. Mm. Yeah, everyone wants to like tell you things, and mm. like oh yeah, you should be doing this, this is how you should do this, uh, blah, blah. Advice is welcome in it, but ultimately, like you just have to play it by ear and tailor it to how your child is because mm-hmm. every child is different and that's the approach that I took and I thought that this works very well because mm-hmm. like, you know, and like as, you, as your own person, like, you know, you grow up and you want to set traditions of your mm-hmm. own. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like you, you take everything that you've learned and you've kind of tailored it down to how you see life mm. and then you apply it to your mm. situation. But obviously, like you said, man, some people yeah. don't think for themselves. But you said earlier, like, there was not really a community. The first thing that jumps out to me is demand them where, where their dad's. Like, like shouldn't, oh. shouldn't, that, shouldn't that be the first point of oh. call for advice? You went deep. Oh, oh okay. this is, this is, that's a separate layer where, where, where I'm peeling right here. I think we're going layer by layer. layer. Yeah, it's Do you remember when Pusha T yeah. said this is a surgical <laughs> summer? <laughs> and we're going to pull this back let's, let's nice it, and slow. Mm. Yeah, that's the first thing that jumps out to me. Like, okay, cool, you're saying your brethren, yeah. he had the child first, but like, I'm somebody's son, yeah, yeah. as the girls yeah. would say. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. somebody's son, right? So, wouldn't that be the first place you go for advice? That is a great point. That is a that's great point. A, that's a, um, I can only look around to the people that are around me, like my direct vicinity, right? And I try not to speak generally. I try not to yeah. make blanket statements. But, yeah. um, when I look at the people around me, don't get me wrong, there are, some of my friends have fantastic dads. Like, yeah, my, my, my boy, my best friend actually has got a fantastic relationship with his dad. And I guess my next best friend, he has yeah. a terrible relationship with his dad. Terrible! Like they've come you, need, you need balance. They've come to blows. I like. You need balance. <laughs> I like. They've come to and blows. It's just like, did you say? For the most part, um, the relationships men in our generation have with our dads isn't ideal. It's not great. Yeah, it's very different. And we, the generation that we grew up in, we've been exposed to a lot more information that they didn't have available back then. Yeah. So um, that's why when they say things like "that's just the way I am," "that's just the way I grew up," I try not to punish them for how they are because it's what they're using, it's what they know. But yeah. saying that, going back to the original point, um, as a result of that, a lot of guys, a lot of men have strained relationships with them, their dads. It could be based on how they treat the dad treated them as a child, how yeah. the dad treated the mum as a child, how the dad treated the sibling as a child, how dad how dad carries himself financially, anything. Was he distant? Like it's crazy because Was he in Nigeria, long <laughs> business trips, all that stuff. All that stuff. There's so much to it. And um 
when you think about things like you didn't grow up in a particularly great environment so not only that was there was no money and he was also distant like you it's just like that's a pick of struggle if you're <laughs> yeah. not going to be around I need Versace <laughs> <laughs> you get I mean? let, let it be a positive yeah sometimes there's just no positive so yeah that it's like when you said about like I know it's from quotes just kind of being an understanding mm. it's obviously if you if you're ever fortunate enough to have a proper conversation with them you know a lot of us mm. second third generation immigrants. so when they came it was money 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 mm. hustle 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 so mm. the way they viewed parenting was provision mm. So I've got to go and do this early morning shift. I've got a course. And then if they got like a traditional setup where the mum kind of deals with all the mm. household stuff, my job is to provide and to smack the kids. Mm. <laughs> That's it, bro. <laughs> 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 I need to put bread on the table and I need to lay the law down, didn't it? Mm. That's pretty much it. There ain't much time for emotion and who told yeah. you can cry and hug and kiss and all this stuff. I'm not saying that's everybody's yeah. experience, but I'm sure there's people that can relate to that, innit? But that's because of how they kind of, maybe they were conditioned yeah. and what they were taught and the way they, they, the outlook on life is, bro, I've got to go and get this bread so mm. that we can get out of poverty. We can yeah. go and get the British passport. And so they, they're they dealing with their own demons in inverted commas, innit? Because, mm. and also you might not know how they were parenting. So like when I've got old and I've had like, I bumped heads with my dad loads, innit? But then my dad lost his dad super early, innit? Mm. So I, kind of wanted to give a bit of leeway there a little mm. bit. But there's some stuff that like unforgivable. Mm. Like we still gotta have that talk as men mm. one day mm. in it. But trying to understand them. When you come here with twenty pounds in your pocket and everything isn't like straight how it should be straight and you go to a job and one week they pay you. Another week they don't pay you. Yeah. And then your son's telling you wants to be a podcast. <laughs> 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 you know what? I hear you, pops. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, so yeah, just the understanding in it. So, but after that, he just jumped out to me. I was like, "Raw, yeah. where like that? Sh- it, I, the ideal yeah. situation would be you have a kid. The first person you run to is yeah, yo, daddy, yo, yeah, yeah. like." Uh, yeah. Show me the ropes. Yeah. yeah. You know what it is? And as well, it's funny you mentioned that, yeah, because as children, the first, your first example of what a relationship should be like is going to be a relationship with your parents, right? Yeah. And which is why they talk a lot about how men are attracted to their mums and stuff, because usually that's who shows the most affection and that carries on through life. And men to dads, sometimes they do have that, oh, daddy's boy, da 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 da. But mm. she's, she's usually, um, attached to success or athletics or something like that. Yeah, like, so some people's dad wasn't there for 10 years, but suddenly my man's in the graduation picture. Me, bro. <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't here my whole my whole college age, my whole uni year. Man popped up. Ah, oh, my son got first class. Yeah. Um, there, there's a lot of like um, different types of scenarios in terms of like fatherhood from people from our generation yeah do you know what i'm saying so you're talking about the dad that wasn't around there's also the dads that were in the house but just wasn't present mm. what's worse probably the dad that was there but wasn't there wasn't there mm. like you're just i don't know <laughs> are you even a presence yeah that's such an interesting question yeah because they both got their own pros and cons they both got their own pros and cons imagine you're present and the mum is just struggling to raise the children and you're just there just you yeah. have no contribution whatsoever. Mm. Just useless. So the son is going to grow up and just think men are meant to be useless like this. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. To, the, wife <laughs> hands, the wife hands everything. Yeah. He's just there. She's washing plates. She's doing this. She's doing that. Coming to feed the man. He's going to see that growing up expecting that. Hey, man, 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 man are taking babes from the dancing and, and angry that she's not bringing water to wash their hands. <laughs> 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 what you got today? Nah, I'm for the new age dogs, but I think in 1996, my mum was doing this, <laughs> and you guys want to bring water to wash my hand. Nah. The babes are telling you, oh, well, like we need to order delivery. Yeah, you see your, you see your mum that pound the yam and that. They're waking up. Yeah, you know. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I am seeing a lot of um, positive situations within our generation mm. yeah positive figures of fatherhood that i see and i'm not talking about you instagram niggas that just do fathering there do you know what i'm mm. saying we like the real the real yeah. shit do you know what mm. i mean like yeah. i'm seeing a lot of that and like you know there's there's man them that are really around get stuck in get stuck in yeah you know um I want to say that like, oh yeah, like there's a large majority of us, but there's still... There's still work to be done. There's, there's still work, work to be done. To be it's done, it's it? never going to be done. It's never going to be complete. We're always going to keep trying. And I say to any man, like, 
no matter how bad it is, just try and make sure you're you're present in your child's life. Like, it doesn't matter how bad the situation is with the child's mum or try and be present because the child will always recognise their dad. Always. Always, yeah. always, always. It's when you're not there completely, that's where you run the risk of but just trying to always be present. Um, not, a, not a hard question, but so for, what's, what's this is season two. Two. Yeah. So if we take a rough number or percentage from season one and season two, mm-hmm. how many of the men you've sat down with are with the mother of their child or married to the mother of their in child? To- in total? Yeah. Oh, that's a difficult question. Yeah. I'm, I'm in a minute still. Um, Take your time. I would say about, I want to say like 40%, no, like 30% yeah. are with the, with the mum. Yeah. Yeah. About, I'm actually about 40%, so about 40% are with the, okay. the mum. Yeah. Only reason I asked it is just because I felt like a little bit of the conversation was leaning a lot towards like the making sure you're around, making sure like, and a lot of that stems from like, Having having children with someone they're no longer with anymore, mm. or like that kind of cliche thing. So we're not trying to make black and famous, but that is a thing in our community as well. That it's is, like that is a thing. Like, that's my baby mom. That's my baby father. Some people don't like those terminologies, yeah. but that's out there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I'm, I'm not saying like if it, you're yeah. with your your children's um, mom and that it's going to be absolutely perfect in a relationship. Mm. We some of us grew up in dysfunction where mm. yeah we grew up in two parent household, but it was brazen in the household. But I think that also plays a part in like why you might be having to have some of these conversations and why a man are having these issues because. Maybe man having children with people yeah. that they didn't necessarily weren't ready to yeah. have children with, or that situation wasn't ideal. Mm. If you want to clean it all up in it, and then that's probably why things are playing out how they're playing yeah. out while we're having to have the round table discussion yeah. and that it's talk it's to each a, other. Yeah, it's important that we have these conversations because there are multiple layers to the reason why things aren't working out. Things are, for lack of a better word, dysfunctional. It could be, like you mentioned, um, you had a child when you weren't ready, or you had a child with someone you barely even knew. Or you charged out with someone and yeah, you barely knew and when you had a child you felt you felt compelled to let's try a relationship. Mm. And now you're as you're getting to know that person, you're realizing that this person is not for you. Because you made a commitment to her and a commitment to your child of sorts to be like, Yeah, I'm gonna be present in your life, you now feel like you're stuck there. Mm. And sometimes in your head it might make sense and it's justified. But when I say it out loud like this, you're thinking to yourself, like, why would you put yourself through that? That's when I start questioning certain proposals. <laughs> I, fans yeah. looking at someone's wedding picture like hmm why is he really there fair enough boy but I know that when I nigga, when nigga, I shouldn't nigga, be the reason nigga, but, nigga, nigga, know, nigga smiled with 40 pics <laughs> <laughs> when you see the wedding picture she's pregnant you know what time it is yeah, yeah, that shouldn't yeah, yeah. Be, yeah I mean that shouldn't be the reason to do that man do mm. you know what I mean you can still be active without but I guess culture plays a part in that yeah yeah, yeah. but you then tend to realize that it's doing a lot more damage. Yeah, yeah you, you lock your babes up. You guys got to do traditional quick. <laughs> but you know what is? This is always after the fact. It's always after like, ah, oh, yeah, I fucked up. Ah, oh, yeah, this is gone to shit. Yeah, ah, oh. I'm, I'm for thinking about it before you do it. <laughs> I can't lie to you, which is why I said you learn from people that have done it before. Like, if I find myself, God forbid, in a situation where I've got someone pregnant, I barely know her or something. Man's I am extra. Not, the extra ribbed. Yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm not even gonna attempt to have a relationship. If I'm man ain't coming out, bro. Huh? <laughs> man's got the man's got a Jimmy with a bulletproof vest on. Yeah, <laughs> just, Teflon. Just in case. Yeah. <laughs> man's got the just yeah. in case doms. Because <laughs> you never know. <laughs> yeah. But you, it's, like, like I said, you live and you learn. So take me back, both of you. Yeah. It's a shame. HJ and I would want to chat with him as well. Yeah. Mm. Where were you? How did you feel? Talk me through when you got the call. When you got the call. Or... <laughs> what do you mean, bro? I knew what I did. <laughs> or, or the chat when you got in, like, take me back to when you found that she was pregnant. Uh, I was expecting it. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. knew oh. the night that did it. Yeah? Yeah. Shout out so to that you. was the one. Yeah. Mem- yeah. Memorable uh, night, innit? Jesus. I was shocked, just like. Anyone else would be. I was shocked. I was very shocked. I said, pregnant? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sissy, yes. You remember, I remember that day because it was such a random day because I remember I, I, it was pre pandemic, of course. And um, she, she was like, oh, I need to talk to you. Um, can you come to my house? I got in my car. Yeah, heart, I got in my car. Heart pounding. No, even that, I, I found it, that wasn't even on my mind. I just went, let me, what's up? I driving there, had a flat tire, had to change my tire. So it was just, by the time I got to house, I was so like, she was coming all to you, dirty and going, sweaty and, you, you and shit. And then pregnancy and he was like, he was lit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, that was like, oh, I need to wash my hands. My hands are black. I was just like, oh. And then she was like, oh, Chris, I need to talk to you, yeah. 
I'm pregnant. You know, it's just like. And why is it always the low voice? I'm pregnant. Yeah. Shout, bro. Yeah, like, no, 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 make no, a no. scene. <laughs> it was just like, I had to just take a minute. You had to sit down. And then I just stood there, just digesting what she said. Just stood there. I can't lie, though. Like, I think when my daughter was like, I don't know, one and a half or 18, 22 months or however these new parents say it. Yeah. Um, she played a prank on me, innit? Uh, she sent me a, a pregnancy test. Your daughter's your mum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like after we had a child. Oh, you guys like, were together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, So like, <laughs> <laughs> nah, it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> a random. <laughs> nigga, what's going on here, yeah, bro? It wasn't, around, it wasn't like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah, we were together. So she sent me a pregnancy test, innit? Like saying I'm pregnant. Bro, nah. that that was when I had a heart attack. You almost you fainted. Nah. Yeah, I was like, nah. I was nah. like, what? I would, I would, I would. So even Chris, be, he phoned the man and load up the squares. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro, I was at work. Yeah, I just I locked my computer. <laughs> I had to go to the toilet. <laughs> bro, I had to. <laughs> You know, you know, man sitting on the toilet seat, closed. Man just sat there on top of the seat, just like. All of a sudden, I was hot. I was hot. Jesus. I was like, shit. How long did she let the prank like run for before she told you like, oh, I'm pranking you? Like it's a joke. Um, I think after five minutes, I called her in it, and then she just started busting up. Oh, uh, you're so right. Dude. I thought it was gonna be like a long. Nah, nah, nah. She, she couldn't hold it that long, bro. Yeah. Those five minutes, <laughs> I know, though. I know, I know. For like an hour. I'm trying to twenty-two. Think. But I remember. T- Bro, we just started podding it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 20, brother. Nah, I can't imagine it. You know what? Since I've had my child, I've, there's no pregnancy scares, nothing. It's just been. I can't imagine having one. <laughs> Mum was like, "No, nah, I, I don't play that game." Nah, listen, I'm celibate. Don't come near me. I can't lie. After she, after she, I didn't have sex for a while. I was because I use a condom as well. So I'm, I'm the time that it happened. Oh, you remember, you remember the time as well? Yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah. Oh, so you one of them does use a Jimmy Angie? Yeah, she got pregnant. That's yeah. that super strength sperm, bro. Yeah, Jesus. fam. I was like, I can't even fight. It, like, yeah, he had pounded jam that day. Man, it's destiny. <laughs> he had pounded jam that day. I tried, day, man. I tried. Yeah, man. I did do a paternity test, but I was like, yeah, there, there's no point. Yeah, it was destiny. Yeah, man. he banged hard food that day. Jesus boy, Christ. Yeah. So that's okay, cool. So you took a few minutes to process, yeah. Mm-hmm. What are the next like words that come out of your mouth when she says to you, "I'm pregnant," and you're standing there or sitting there and you're trying to take it all in? Do you remember what you said to her after that? Once you, as you're processing the thoughts. No, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. I can't lie, unfortunately. No, it was a it was a rough patch. It was a very rough period in my life. I can't lie to you. Like, um, I remember how I felt over the next few months. It was just it was actually no, I'm mixing it up. Let me come clean. Let me let me come. Let me come clean. So when she was pregnant, I didn't believe her in it. So I was like, yeah, this it's clearly not mine. This is scam. <laughs> it's clearly not mine. I use a condom, and there's no way this um could be mine. And we didn't speak after that. We didn't speak for till she had our daughter. Jesus. Yeah, I know. Um, so she called me. She was like, "Oh, um, no, she messaged me." She was like, I remember this. She was like, "Oh, yeah." It was my oh, daughter's yeah. birthday. It was it's our daughter's birthday um, a few days ago. So our daughter was born a few days ago. Oh, we'll timestamp that for you. A good one. You're good. We'll clean that. Don't yeah. worry. Oh, thank you. Um, she t- she messaged me. She was like, "Oh, it was our daughter's birthday. Um, our daughter was born a few days ago. Um, let me know what you want to do." And that is when shit hit the fan. I was just like, "Raw, I've been in denial for the last nine months." But a little part of me, maybe like, maybe like ten percent of me, was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna fight this paternity test. No, it's mine." So like, ordered a next day delivery paternity test. Went straight there. I remember with my boy and I walked in, I could just feel daggers on the side of my head. You know when you, you're doing something you're not meant to be doing, I could feel it. So I went to the baby just to, and I gave them the swab to get the DNA out, left. Two days later, yeah. Confirmed. It was a 99.97% match. Man, so if there's any baby in the said, world that's yours, <laughs> this is your baby. I said to myself, am I really good about to Try to fight to zero point zero three percent possibility. Oh, you want them guys? No, 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 no. I'm in the minority. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. That's, that's your kid, bro. Yeah, so. Firm that. Did you have any regrets? Um, yeah, a lot. Um, I kind of said to myself. Obviously, I wasn't playing sm- sailing at first. Obviously, because I was on the for nine months. It was like, how do I establish myself in, um, 
my daughter's life and her mum's life, let alone I'm actually a serious person. Um, it was a struggle at first because my identity was sort of changed. I had to mold myself into what I needed to become at that point in time. Because you need to remember, usually you have nine months to prep for this. Yeah. And I you had, guys ain't had that. I was, like, I was, to know I was in the minus yeah. in terms of prep time. So, uh, yeah, but re- in terms of regrets, yeah, um, I, c- I could have been there. I, sh- I should have been there. So, no, I could I should have been there. Even if it's, even on the basis of just being a good human being, like, I could have asked her how she was. Like, I knew she was pregnant. Why couldn't I just check up on her? Like, Are you good? Everything all right? Like, just on a human, basic human level. So at the time you, you're probably you're obviously angry. Um, when she first told me, yeah, no, I wasn't even angry. It was just like it's impossible. Like I said I used a condom, right? Like so you, you so you, that was that. Then like you never thought there's a possibility. No, the thing is, I sorry, I use a condom. I right. I don't play that bear back game. Yeah, I don't play that. Oh, you Muslim now? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I don't play that. No, I'm, not, I'm not trying to push you to, to yeah. um, too much. They say the same like sex that, PSA, you know what I'm bro. Like, like it's just like obviously, I'm just trying to because my experience is different. Yeah. I'm just trying to place myself in yeah. that mindset in it because you know I, I saw the the entire journey up until she was yeah. she was born and stuff. So you know, like, and how would you feel if you'd missed that nine months? Um, terrible. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like because this is this is a product of you. Yeah, yeah. essentially. Like, it's not trying to throw him a bus. It's just like no, no, I think that's know. what he's kind of speaking to a little bit. It's just like being honest, being grown, and I hope people take this the right way. Is that like, yeah, like he said, I should have been there. I could have been there, even if like obviously <clears> the situation a little bit different. Yeah, I'm not with the yeah, person. Yeah, you but know what's, on like a base, like we're doing. Obviously, it's harder because there's no there's a, there's an air of uncertainty in it. Mm. Yeah, and then so I'm was, sitting from a different lens. Yeah, so obviously, yeah. like my perspective is completely different. Like yeah. I, I wasn't in that type of situation. You can't duck so, your girlfriend. Yeah. Like no, it's, no, it's, no, it's, it's easy, bro. It's, yeah. it's easy to in hindsight because what you've been through isn't necessarily the reality of someone who's actually been through what I, my experience. Um, yeah. You're gonna look, always look for it through a lens of what it was like being there. So you always. I don't know. Just what I'm saying makes sense. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, um, absolutely. So yeah, I was, I was, I can't lie, I was angry. I was, no, was it anger? Is that the word I want to use? If you're angry, I was upset, bro. If you're angry, angry, I was upset. I was upset. I'm upset. I feel like covers how I was feeling in totality. Um, on one level, I was angry. I was just like, I can't believe this is how my life is going to be. I'm going to be one of those people that has had a child on them randomly. Um, then I was like, oh, my future's going to shit. Then it was like, I'd have enough money to do this, and. Um, then I was just there was, I was just how sad I was like I missed nine months but don't get me wrong this wasn't all in the space of like a day or a week it was over the space of months like um, you was going through going through the motion how you yeah, feel going stuff, through, yeah, 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 yeah. I, oh, it, it, bro like you know I can imagine like it's, yeah. it's a lot to take in yeah even the language yeah. I was using like I told people all the time Chris like, do me a favour shut that door please just close it up thank you sir even the langu- language I was using to speak to my daughter's mum like um it wasn't necessarily bad or anything, but I know that there was always friction. And the way I spoke, it was kind of like um, come from a cold place. Yeah, were you speaking via text as well? No, yeah, via text was also kind of a lot of stuff. So yeah, like, a lot of stuff gets lost in translation like, via text. In hindsight, I can be like, it was kind of like a you did this to me, you 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 did this. You oh did right, this. right, right. Placing like the blame that on. kind of language. I mean, it's only now I can look back and be like, you know what, that was terrible. But um, and have you expressed that to her? Pardon? Have you expressed yeah. that to her? I was, I was just, just going to come to that. Yeah. Um, I'm talking, we've only ever argued once. And that one time we argued, she, at the end of it, she was just like, you say things or you said things that um, make it seem like you don't want to be. Oh, okay. Around. And that's when the penny sword dropped. I was just like, yeah, that's that's wrong. Like, if there's mm. one thing about me, it's the fact that I I would willingly own up to my mess ups. I don't know. I don't have, I don't shy from it. I wasn't going to pull out my chest and be like, no, if that's what just what you think, I'm not going to do that. And how she was feeling was very valid. So I was like, you know what? That's a fair point. And from that moment onwards, I was like, I'm going to do right by you. I'm going to do right by our door. And that's where we are today. That's good, man. Now, I like it. Obviously, like, you got your platform, you have conversations with people, but I'm sure the major part of the reason why you started is because you got two mm. as well. And so it's like, it's, I'm, I, we, we've joked on the podcast about me being wary about having conversations in relation to kids. I ain't got any kids mm. here. So I'm living vicariously through, through yeah. you, man, innit? But like, we've got to have these chats because, you have to. like, I can't lie. If, it, if I was in your shoes, mm. 
I probably would have felt a little bit the same way mm. because yeah. I'll have an image of how I want to have my family and if it things don't fall in line with that, I feel like I've fallen short in it. And then you're always going to have control in it over your life because we look at the site we live in and how things are happening with our government now and money and all these things that are going on currently. But that's just something I would want. I'd want to avoid certain things. I want to look at certain people's experience and be like, okay, cool. I'll take something from that. That I want to avoid. Mm. I don't want to have a, I want it to be my wife, innit? Mm. I, have, I have children within it. And it's not me talking down to anyone, but that's just how I want my situation, yeah. innit? So, mm-hmm. and if I have, obviously life will life, innit? But if I have a situation that's not that, a little bit might be disappointing at the time, innit? Now we could make a beautiful situation after mm. that, but I know from inception what I would want, innit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So. Like, and, um, you know, sometimes you got to think about the person that's carrying the child. Oh, like, yeah. you know, it, it's from the moment you know they find out they're active they're already in that mode mm. do you know what I'm saying like and with the mandem sometimes it takes us ages to you know get to that point and sometimes it's like rah we don't even they're, they're like we don't even have the patience to get to this point why do we have to wait you know and that is another thing that can cause conflict mm. I've seen it so many different times like you know and it's like it, what is it is it is it a case of the man them having to be better mm. or is it um a case of like having a woman patient with you i think it's a combination of probably that and more stuff money plays a big part as well because that's the first a lot of our fears because like, like i said we we're talking about mm. like our dads and our uncles all people before us like their situation provision so mm. your first thought is, and a lot of my friends I've spoken to is like, "Rah, where's, where's the peace? Where's like, what's gonna go on?" I'm gonna f- like that's what my, mm. my friends have said to me. So that's what we our, yeah. our our default is that, yeah. And not saying anything wrong with that, but we need to find there's you need to nurture, and I'm sh- sure you guys can mm. speak to as well. But bro, when nappies ain't cheap, bro. Like at, at the very get go, it is bread. No, nah, it's bread, bro. At the start, if I think as human beings, we the joy of him being a human is that we get to choose the kind of person we want to be. We get to choose who we want to be, shall I say. Um, we may not always be in the right circumstances to be that person. We may not have the facilities to be that person, but um, we get to choose the kind of parent we want to be. We get to choose the kind of dad we want to be. And if you decide that um, you want to be and to provide for your child, you want to be there for your child, you're going to make it happen. You're yeah. going to make it happen. If you decide to just prioritize finances, knowing what your absence will do to your child because like I said it's documented we've seen it happen for how many generations what it's like to grow up without a dad in the house or to mm. grow up with a, an emotionally absent dad in the house if you choose to repeat that pattern just please know that that is a conscious decision you chose to do that so mm. but yeah if you can if you want to be a great dad you can be a great dad it's not beyond anyone it's just love your kids man mm? <laughs> love your kids I know love your kids yeah like I've seen it change you it glowed him up mm? glowed him up massively bro mm. I mean, yeah. you know, like yeah, having a child will do that to you. Yeah, 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 and um, it's taught me a lot. It's it's uh, it, it you you get to see things like you know in from a different lens. You're watching yourself mm. basically um, develop. Mm. Like you know, there's shit that amazes me that you know may be basic to another person, but just like just hearing her like getting to the point where she's at you know at her reading level mm. you know she's exceeding expectations at school she's excelling so you know it's it's just another proud thing what are you saying star of the week nine weeks in a row we've got to load up she's that going account ham. she's going ham you know what I mean sometimes yeah. like <laughs> I feel like she's too good but I can't complain <laughs> bro. Bro, relax but chill <laughs> out bro we just talk about badass kids bro you got to be happy bro <laughs> no no I can't lie <laughs> Um, so you're doing too well, chill out. <laughs> so my daughter's fifth birthday, yeah, we went to, um, uh, what's it called, Kids Space in Croydon. It's like a massive, massive kids. Well, soft play and jump yeah, around stuff. I thought it was soft play, but there was a lot of stuff you could do. You could climb, there's climbing frames and stuff. Jesus. It was a massive, massive thing. And my do- I realized my daughter has spoiled me. She's very calm, she's very cool. She's the kind of girl that I could, I could say to her, babe, I need you to just sit here for 30 minutes and she'll chill out and she'll even an hour and she, I'll go and come back and she'll be there right so her birthday um, I got to experience in full flow what it was like to be responsible for erratic children and I was just like this is chaos how big was the I party 
there wasn't like <coughs> six or seven kids, bro. But it felt like 30. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I, I was went to a party on the weekend, bro. Yeah. I had to like step outside for a bit, catch a little snooze in a in a whip. <laughs> I went to sleep, went to nap. Yeah, bro. Fam, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Like it's a lot. Like, my daughter spoiled me. She, oh goodness me. God knew what he was then because yeah. he knows I've got injured to run around any after any naughty kid. It's too much. It's too much. Yeah, too much. someone else deal with that. But one thing I would like to point out, though, I feel like having a kid, it it really determines the type of man you are, in my opinion. It determine like it brings out who you are, in my opinion. Like if you're a good, if you're going to be a great person, I feel like your child will bring that out of you. You would want to be a great person for your child. If you're going to be a criminal. Not having enough fun to provide for your child will bring out the criminal in you. Having a child will bring out the version of you that you're meant to be. Man, Obviously. I'm, man on the wing said, I'm here because of you. <laughs> <laughs> man, man on the vision said, if it wasn't for you, <laughs> I wouldn't be so, doing 10 years. So yeah, but at the point of you having a child, you actually have a choice to make. You, have, you can choose if you want to be a great dad or you can yeah. choose if you want to be a criminal. You can choose if you want to be a deadbeat dad. You actually get to make that choice. So from what you're saying, you're not you don't give slack to or fl- um, like leeway for those dons that like aren't around their kids. There's and, circumstance like, like it's all circumstantial, right? Like not everyone's situation is the same. It's easy for me to say this yeah. because I have a good relationship with my daughter's mom. I can yeah. I can talk about this, but I don't know what it's like to be in a toxic environment. But yeah. what I will say is, you are in control of what I won't accept is um, it's her fault. It's her mom's fault that I'm not there. It's her, that is, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. she did this, she did that. And so I'm asking you what you're doing and you're antagonizing each other. Like, you want to claim you're a superior man, you want to claim your superior gender, but you're being, someone that you label crazy all the time is goading you into reacting all the time and you want to claim you're superior to her. Come She's on, got man. control of you, basically. <laughs> do, yeah. you see, do you see it? So that I wouldn't accept. I think there definitely are guys out there that, that are going like through the cliche like oh, the, yeah. the wicked baby mom like she's mm. not letting me see the kids I think there are, there are guys that go through that absolutely because um, I ain't got children so some stuff I'm going to relate to so it's going to be maybe hard for me to speak on speak freely but I just I don't know it's just like what is the how do you move mountains if like so traditionally it's the mum that has the child mm-hmm. um whether you agree or not, a lot, of, a lot of us subscribe to them having like paternal behaviors. Mm. It's, it's them, like it's their child in essence. Mm. Isn't it? Obviously, you just if you're together, great. But if you're not, it's gonna mm. be that's where the child is Monday to Friday. There's a lot of rights in regards to to women and their children. I'm probably rightly so because they, they, you don't see a lot of women cutting mm. out and not looking after you. And it's not mm. that's not a tradition we have over here, it. So unless there's a a whole new tradition coming that we're not gonna that I don't want to be around for, mm. like you know. But I just feel. I don't want to mess my words. I just feel like yes, I do. I do lean to a bit towards like if you're gonna be there, you be there. But I'm sure there's definitely guys out there like have tried and tried and tried. And unless you're gonna go through the court system, which mm-hmm. is another whole beast, mm-hmm. and then one could argue that's money you're kind of taken away from probably probably providing for your child. And is there a cost? Is there how much money is too much money to spend on your kid to get your child? Okay, probably, so probably isn't too much but I don't know it's like I, w- I want to understand that perspective as well I think the scenario you're referring to is, is when the mum sort of weaponizes the child against yeah. the dad is, is that what you're referring to yeah, yeah, yeah I think in those situations like um, again it's very very easy for me to say this in theory and like this is just based on an accumulation of thoughts of people I've spoken to and people that have had the best outcomes in those instances right um I think when that happens, you have to, your first instinct, or your first thing should be to focus on yourself. You need to make sure you're being the best man you can be, you're, you're doing things the right way that so that she has nothing to use against you. You need to make sure you're clean, you're coming correct, you're being polite, you're being respectful, you're speaking to her with, it has, the thing is when to, what's that saying? If you ma- argue with a mad person, you can't tell who's who. Yeah, you won't know who's mad, so yeah. if you're matching her, what you claim to be madness, you're, you're both equally contributing towards it, right? So you have yeah. to check yourself. You have to be the best version of you, right? And then, once your case, I guess, is airtight, you can be like, yo, like, I'm doing everything I need to, I'm doing everything I can. What is it that you would like? How can I help you? What is it that you actually want from me? Yeah. Because it has to be clear. She, if it's something that she actually wants, she has to communicate that. If mm-hmm. she wants to be with you, that's a whole different kettle <laughs> of fish entirely, like. Yeah. I mean, we're speaking a very calm, idealistic, like black and white. I know, like, listen, <laughs> relationships, <laughs> People talk spice to each other. Yeah. Like I know online we like to, oh yeah, if your man could like bro, yeah. I've been situations, bro. <laughs> horrible stuff's been said to me. Yeah. Horrible stuff's been said back. Cause yeah, like yeah. I know that like as much for what you're saying, like, I hear it, but yeah. that will take a 
It, it yeah, takes a lot of restraint and self control to, especially when you're dealing with something that's so near and dear to which is your, yeah, your child. And if that if it is the cliche yeah. scenario of like the child's being weaponized against you, you're not being able to be in the child's life because the mum is controlling, dictating that. Some people harsh harshly might hear, oh, you know, maybe she had someone had a child with someone that you're, you know, you knew yeah. better. But like I said, I'm sure women had had a child for someone that said they're gonna be there and don't mm. cut out. Yeah, so people change, innit? But like I said, don't forget, that, like I led with, it's a, it's an accumulation of thoughts from people I've spoken to, as yeah. well as books that I've read as well. Like in that moment, in those heated moments, like you said, people say talk spicy to each other, right? But as it's, as as it's getting spicy, we're present. We, we're seeing it, we're feeling it get spicy and you're yeah. contributing towards it. Like there comes a point in time where you have just own, you have just own your part. But I, I like hot food, I live in the spice. This, this, <laughs> this, this, this nah. is where I thrive. Nah, <laughs> I, really, I, I don't, it drains me. Yeah. It drains me completely. I'm just like, nah, I'd just rather not. Mm. I'm not involved. You love a spicy conversation? I, I mean, like to- When it comes other, to that, innit? To, or to other people that are going through it that I may know, I'll stay out of it now. No, oh, listen. Absolutely. No involved. Uh, yeah. It, <laughs> be it, safe. Yeah, nah. <laughs> be guided. Yeah, be guided. Because my thing is always, you should, if, it, if it gets to that level, you need to seek help. There's nothing wrong in getting counseling or getting therapy. Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing. You, you clearly no. can't do it yourselves. You've made it clear. Yeah. yeah. Address it before you start you gotta to be leave. A, you got to be mature enough to accept that though. That's like, a fair to point. To want to do it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and I've stopped placing any energy towards those type of situations. And mm. I think like as a community, we always focus on those type of things. Like when there's a lot of joy and bliss around us mm. that needs to be celebrated more. That's why like, when I see, um, is it the, the Cabs family? Yeah. Oh yeah, I know you're talking about, yeah. Bro, like I smile all the time yeah. because obviously like, I can only go by what they show us, mm. but it's positive, innit? Mm. Yeah. And that's what I like to see. Like, I like, um, you know, people to thrive in healthy relationships mm. because, you know, we, we focus on trauma too too much. Yeah. One you know? thing about, yeah, sorry. One thing about relationships as well is, regardless, regardless of stuff, I will keep saying it and I hope my community is listening. Um, we need to continue focus on being the best version of ourselves in the relationship you should be the best version of yourself your partner should bring out the best in you not the worst in you and if you consistently see the worst in you imagine you're trying you're, you're trying to navigate raising a child and the feelings for each other and you're both bringing out the worst out of each other like you know no, that's true yeah, yeah. yeah people are in situations that don't that no longer serves them but they're just there because of habit yeah um and sometimes like when the habit overrules like your genuine feelings towards yeah. the other person yeah like yeah. it's really gonna show out and yeah. um you know uh, it's gonna be mirrored or you know some people uh, you know psychoanalyze their parents and as they get older mm. they start to make sense of certain mm. things and they and that's where neglect comes into it mm. or um you know they start to pick up these toxic traits you know, as if it was, it's hereditary, but mm. you know, if if that's all that you see within your four walls, mm. that's how you're gonna then navigate. If you if you let it, if you let the process, yeah. you know, overcome you. There's a there's a term they love using for it in um uh on on social media. Also, um, generational curses. I'm just like, it's just learned behavior. Like, what's it, generational curse, generational generational yeah. sign. I mean, like the one I usually see is generational wealth. That's the one I'm trying to absorb. Of course. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's yeah, what I'm trying yeah. to let marinate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let that's that marinate, yeah. man. That's what you need. But now I'm with you, yeah, it's, it's learned behavior. It's what you see, yeah. what you grow up around the cause. You're going to, a lot of us, so, like, I think social media is helping us. We're having different conversations. You know, we are, we aren't our parents to some degree, but to another degree, a lot of us are very much like our parents. And yeah. you realize it as you grow up and yeah. you start having your own families or dealing with, having relationships yeah. with opposite sex and that. You start realizing, yeah, I'm like, I'm like my pop still. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm like my mum, or you know, yeah. negatively you, and positively. Yeah, yeah. but you want to identify what what the wrongs are. Yeah, the stuff that like you won't necessarily like about your parents if you're keeping it a buck. Mm. Mm. That you don't want to inherit. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, there comes a point in time. I always, well, I don't always say, but in my opinion, people should just, even for the sake of their children, just choose to be the best version of yourself. Like, yeah, that's, that's for the sake of your child. Yeah. yeah. At the very, for the sake of a child, at the very least. No, well, that's just, that's genuine. I'm on anyway. So I'm the best version of me. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy loves it. You know, if, I love that. If anybody loves it, Vans loves it. Love <laughs> Absolutely it. Absolutely loves it, bro. 
He loves, loves it, it though. Loves it. So where can everyone, in terms of like your, your content, um, your platform, where can people go to to, to engage in? Oh, and primarily, uh, it's my personal Instagram page is Chris underscore Topper. You can go on the Figuring Out Fatherhood Instagram page. It's Figuring Out Fatherhood underscore. Someone had beat me to the original app. And he hasn't posted it since like 2016, so he's even the oh, I hate anymore. that shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, you want to keep this app post, bro? Yeah. 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 But then Twitter as well, Chris underscore Topper. Um, YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Chris Topper. No underscore this time. Send the production done, gone up. Oh, uh, yeah. I learned to do all by myself, you know, like the last, last year or so, I picked up a camera, started taking pictures. Um, now I learned to edit. The next step is just to on against like video production and stuff. So that's sick, man. Nah, I like I like the new look. I, I like. Thank what you. You're appreciate doing it, with. man. Um, I see you had a man man on their chef diaries. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. I was I was, <laughs> I was watching that like, damn. <laughs> hey, this bro, this bro really talking, but yeah. I like it because man, like even like we had a chat with you today, mm. you know, man. I've got to be honest, and it's not always gonna sound super pretty mm. because I know, especially with the internet and how things live, they can live forever. Mm everybody's trying to put the best version of self forward and like, yeah, the most ideal situation, I'm the best this, I'm the best that, but there may have been a time in your life where looking back, you didn't represent the best version of mm. yourself there, mm. it. Now, we can correct it going forward, yeah. but we just have to be, like, be, be, be a bit transparent at times and be like, yo, I didn't like how I moved there, yeah. I could have done better, very yeah. simply. These but times, the women are at home pressed, like the last thing you should have gave these niggas was a microphone. <laughs> 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 now, do you know what? The internet doesn't, it doesn't allow people room to grow. Yeah. They think. It's a ruthless place. The version of you that they think you are, they, they attach that to you for the rest of your life. And it's unfortunate, but like you said, they said niggas shouldn't go behind mics no more. And that is. A gospel. Say that louder one more time, please. A gospel. But you're here in the room for three niggas. Okay. I, I hope you know, they haven't, they haven't apps, they haven't changed all the joint enterprise laws. Like if, <laughs> like if we going down I know you tried to separate yourself from us you're going down too like it's done bro uh, all the donnies and the donnets everyone's going all going down all together all the donnies and the donnets yeah bro he's be trying to separate yourself from us nah bro you going down Essie's going down <laughs> everybody is all over bro it's, it's all it's over done, Jackie yeah, it's but you know over. what Um, I think with all the podcasts that they want bringing down and stuff yeah I think it's actually good that we're seeing that this is what a lot of men think like, and when I see, oh, yet another one, I'm just like, oh, guys, we have a lot of work to do. Like, these men actually think like this on a day-to-day basis. Like, they carry themselves in this capacity. I like, think it's a mix of, there's definitely that, but also, man had to pander to a certain audience to gain traction. Yeah, course, so, yeah. I, don't, I don't know which, I don't know, I think, I don't, I don't know which one scares me more out of the two, because on one hand, I can almost respect if that's how you truly feel, because it just comes from a negative place, and we can mm. hopefully try and fix that, innit? Mm. The other one is just being a neek. <laughs> That's what it is, though, isn't it? And I hate this word, clout. Nah, do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? Let's, clout, call, let's, let's call it a spade a spade. Let's call it a spade a spade. Yeah, social media is all about, it's all about engagement. It's all about the dopamine hit you get when yeah. someone likes your tweets. Re- when you get thousands and thousands of retweets and likes and stuff like that. People do it for the sake of that. And be brighter, man. Like, it's, be original. It's, but I always when to, when even see me saying Anika, I'm not like, cancel what I'm saying. Then I do also understand it from what you're saying. Yeah. On one hand is, these are tried and tested methods. Yeah. So if people, if people want reward in this behavior, people would wouldn't do it, bro. Yeah, that's not what I would have Now, is, it, is there a long, is there longevity with it? Yeah. It's to be seen, isn't it? But in the first initial, like, month, six months, a year, bro, you might have that brazier on, like, Kevin Samuels when you go viral, and now you start having to lean into it. Yeah. You know, like we spoke think, about last I think week. I that's what happens. I actually think that's what happens, and it's unfortunate, but I mean, when I put season two, people are like, oh, it's going to be a bit of controversy, like, talking about- They wanted to get a little salacious. Up, a little, yeah, and I was just like, that's not they something- They to start talking about the like, negative baby moms you know, in our community. Like it's Jerry Springer or something. I'm, I'm not here for that, man. Like, <laughs> it's, uh, that's not something that I ever want to attach to any brand of mine. Like, I don't want to be attached to negativity or promoting negativity in our community. Like, because as much as, um, people love the sensational stuff online and stuff. We need to remember that the audience isn't just us. It's also the white eyes. They, they're also, con- they're also consuming the stuff. Like I don't know how I feel about doing it for the whites, man. I'm nah. not, I don't know, bro. I don't, I don't, that always makes me feel uncomfortable. Like, ah, no. Nah. Like, why is that? It shouldn't be enough community in the first place, but for them, yeah. That's, that's I, a separate I, conversation. It's, no, but it's something about. I battle with, it because I, who was that? Do you remember that campaign? Couple of years ago, is it fifty six hoodies? And I had all the photos of the man in black hoodies. David Lammy was on there. Um, <laughs> I just know this is gonna be some bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> like, 
it's like just showing a, a safer, softer version of the black man than, you know. No, 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 no. I just, no, no, I just, no, no, I just didn't like, I don't like how no, 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 like, Nah, you were scaring no. me, niggas. Like, you're already, you're already, you're already panning to people who already view no. you a certain way. It's not going to change. It's like, why is that our focus and why do we care about how, I don't, I don't know. It's, no, I, I get what you're saying. It's, no, it's no, just no, weird. No. It's just like. We shouldn't need to soften ourselves for the white, for the white gays or anything. Yeah. We don't need to do any of that. That's not what I'm suggesting here in any capacity. So you've got people that are going to gaslight you and stuff. It's like. They'll, we'll talk about certain things and then they'll bring up... So we'll talk about like what's going on in regards to like racism mm. within the education system or um, our issue with the police and then they'll bring up things like black-on-black violence to try and gaslight us. And we've also got a part to play in that with yeah. regards to the language you use and how we let that become a thing that people actually like... It's a term that's used and people can accept it. it uh, Okay, I get where you're coming from. Okay. So it's like we play the part at the start of that, yeah. and just accepting that, and that become a thing they run with. When part of the reason why there's a negative relationship with police mm. is because of how you dealt with us. So it's okay. like you can't eat your cake and have it. You don't want to. You don't truly really want to repair this thing, but you also want to abuse us on one hand. And then okay, cool. Better example: Stormzy then goes off and does his drive and help with higher education mm. and they go that's racist but you said mm. we have a problem in our community why aren't the blacks helping no, each no, other no, out no. Okay, hold on. like so like okay, hear me, hear me, hear me it's out. weird to me bro we've slightly segued into a separate conversation yeah. slightly ever so slightly so when i say we think about the audience that's watching right it's yeah. um anything that involves promoting division in our community i'm against yeah in general like full stop no no i'm with you. i support that yeah full stop but i'm even more inclined to be against it when it's just like these are the people that are consuming this content. Like, no, not you. <laughs> yeah. That's the way I feel. It's like, nah, not you. But you know, is anything you put on the world on, on the exactly. internet is up for anything. Like, there isn't a black filter, bro. I'm sorry, uh, no, no, bro. No, no, facts. You facts, can't put facts. someone into say only for the blacks. So it's just like, <laughs> only any, for the any, niggas. Any, any, so <laughs> this is what takes back to my point. Anything that promotes the vision of our community, I just, mm. I don't want to, I don't entertain it. I don't want to see, I don't want to see that stuff. No, I, no, I, I, get, I get the problem. I just, I'm always on that. Now, that doesn't go just for anybody. Anybody be sat here. I always will feel weird. Now, maybe some of us will have to like reconcile with and figure out how yeah. I um, like communicate that point. Mm. But when anyone says to me first, like, I just feel like the white gaze. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not setting my house thinking, oh, there's one big white man in his in his in his room that's disappointed with us. I'm like, brother, you're it's, not, it's, it's not disappointment. It's, it's what happens afterwards. You can, mm. you can, they can feel how they're feeling. Their feelings don't matter. It's mm. how they act and how they feel. That's the real problem, and that's mm. the truth regards to anyone's feelings, to be honest. Yeah. Anger, joy, happiness, sadness, within itself, as an individual entity, yeah. they're harmless. Mm. What you choose to do with how you're feeling is the real problem. Yeah. So. I'm just saying, we've seen it, yeah, uh, what's ne- happening in the US. Never ever change who you are for the white gays. Never yeah. ever ever. The, you're doing a disservice to yourself. My focus is, is on us first and foremost. And like, be, like you said earlier about the, is it the Quabs or the Cabs family? Like, yeah. It's a positive representation, if I'm wording you correct. It's like, mm. it's, you, you like seeing that, mm. innit? I love seeing that, Because yeah. we, we can speak about all the dysfunction that like we've got people like in our community, and maybe we need to show that more to, sh- to show people that this is a norm. Because when, be, when, mm. when um, I've seen conversation in relation to certain communities getting married and not getting married, I used to work for a catering company for mm. a long time. I was at weddings every blessed weekend, mm. sometimes twice a weekend, mm. stuff during the week. So from in my like raw world experience, I didn't know that community to not get married. How mm. some people might talk about them online. Like, them, them niggas was marrying, bro. You know, yeah, they were spending, nah, spend, nah, nah, spending hella money in getting yeah, married. Nah, so, like, I'm just, one thing. Listen, we're busy with weddings this, this year. Bro, well, back to home. back. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm even seeing young niggas get married. I'm like, oh, what are you doing? It's like, brother, slow down. <laughs> 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 You've not reached your final form. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on there? Like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you 21. What are you doing? <laughs> Oh man, oh, that's that's the bad gospel right there, you know. <laughs> I mean, looks if I was twenty one, <laughs> <laughs> you haven't hit your peak was, yet. You know, I'm studying. No, man, your getting peak, married, eh? like, getting married as a man at twenty one is breezy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're throwing away your pram just like that. Yeah, but he, he could flourish with his wife, isn't it? I hear that. Yeah. Let's 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 clean it up. <laughs> yeah, I hear yeah, that. they yeah. can flourish together, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I hear that. I hear that. High school sweetheart, and that. Yeah, that's yeah. a high school sweetheart, you know. They're yeah. the ones. So the man, man get to 30 and, that, and then he's like, oh, I want to see what's out there for me. <laughs> it's too late, nigga. Uh, you should have uh, did that at 25. Yeah, the streets yeah. say, bro, you don't have to cross the road, bro. Stay in your house, bro. I want to see what's out there. the streets. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> man. Crazy. Before we get off all of this, yeah. So for people that may be in situations like yourself, how do you guys navigate, if you mind, 
I don't, you don't have to get too too personal. You can tell me what you want mm. to tell or tell me to shut the hell up. But be in a situation where you're not with your child's um, mother. Mm-hmm. So separate households, separate schedules. How do you navigate that to get to a place where like everything is, you know, wholesome, uh, happy, healthy? The first thing is, there's a couple of points. The first thing I would say is to focus on the fact that you are, you are no longer together. You're work, now you're working together yeah. to raise your child. That's the first thing. That has to be at the forefront of any decision you make, any action you take, individually, together. That's the forefront of your mind. Second thing is just establish some firm boundaries. Firm boundaries. The third thing, you, you show up for your child. You do what you're meant to do. Do what you've agreed to. That Those are the three fundamental things you have to do. And from there, you can start building blocks on top of that in terms of establishing a good relationship with your, with your child's mom. Yeah. But the first thing, to your child she always 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 like when she's asking for more money when she's asking she can do certain things or if he doesn't want to do something like do you know I mean any decision your child has to be in the center of it oh fourth thing and I guess this could be even the most important one put your ego to the side oh mm. put your ego to the side let me mark that one yeah. down from now. <laughs> you, you, know, you, know, you know me, but my ego. I'll give you a tip. Yeah. I'll give you a tip. Yeah. And this yeah. is something I learned. And this is not meant to come across as sex. Yeah. This is just my experience and conversations with Amanda. Now, um, when you're arguing with a woman, yeah. when you're arguing with a woman. Something I rarely do, but yeah, this, go off. If, you, if you're going to argue with a woman, yeah, um, just know that your ego is what's at stake. Oh it's yeah, what's at stake? They know how to. They know how to. Once she's able to push that button, yeah, you've lost. You've actually lost. Mm. Just so if you can put that to the side. But what if I have a button as well? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, see that button here? That's like Putin just standing over the the nuclear war button. Like that's just hovering the finger. Hovering over the, the finger. Nuke. So if you if you choose to push that button, and you set her off, yeah, the gloves are off, and you did the consequences of the nuclear explosion. They're on you because you chose to push that button. Okay. <laughs> me too I, I can, you can blow up the Kremlin I can blow up New York what, <laughs> what, what, what are we is, doing here is, it, is that what you want is this what you really want blow for blow <laughs> nah, is that actually what no, you want no that's not what I want that's, that's not what nah. I want <laughs> your ego to the side yeah okay I've learned that one now so, so point four or point five is is the most important point put your, your ego, ego to the side put your ego to the side yeah, yeah no. care to share anything or is, or is that the is that, that that good gospel? That good fatherhood gospel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, with with me, it's just uh, you get together, you have a conversation, you find out what works for you, you find out what works for the other person, yeah. and then you try to bring both things together mm. and and meet in the middle. And um, you know, we communicate effectively every step mm. of the way. Like you know, if I need to be updated with something, I'm updated. You know, I've, um, you know, as, as far as the school goes, you know, I'm not just leaving it up to the mum to mm. be um, subscribed to the mailing list. I'm there as well. My number is there in the contact. If there's anything that needs to be discussed, then it needs to be discussed, you know. And then we we always go back and we talk mm. and then we come up with a solution, a decision. Um, and that's how it's always been. You know, um, it's just the best way to do things. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, um, and everyone's situation is different, but it's for me, it's the best way to to operate. Yeah. Um, and you know, you've got a. You know, when when a child is involved, you you handle a lot of the situations with delicacy and um, love and care for me personally. Mm, so, yeah. 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 yeah, I just want to highlight a point that he made. Communication is important. It's, I can't stress, not just what you're saying, but how you're saying it as well, how you're delivering the message, back and forth. If you can avoid text, especially in heated moments, I would. But your oh. communication, how you're speaking to your I've written a madness on text and, and then cleared it. I'll say, yeah, I don't want to send that. <laughs> you, you just deleted your bars? No, nah, no. Nah. The, the mean 16, yeah. I mean, I copied, I copied and pasted and kept in the notes just in case <laughs> <laughs> for another Man, day. Archive the disc, yeah, just, just in case when I need to like use this. But right now, mm. we ain't gonna do this in it. So, but uh, when I was saying to you earlier, oh, yeah, now nah. just, just even aside from like it going wrong, things get lost in translation via yeah. text, innit? I can't, I'm an OG when it comes to I love a good FaceTime. Mm. Call me, let's talk, innit? 
Yeah, Foles is mean with the FaceTime. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? Just call you randomly. Let me give an example. I'm announced to that. Like, yo. <laughs> a man has a phone mad close here. I'm like, yo, show me the back. Who's there, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I always know my, where my friends are up to no good. My pick up the FaceTime like this. <laughs> I'm like, yo, bro, move. I can see your nostril hairs, bro. <laughs> Man's answering I first. <laughs> I love yeah. my friends, but I know you like to know good. You say, yeah, all right, cool, man. I'll show you later. Mm-hmm. You know. Is, is only going to say something? You, you want to add anything, Chris? Or are you just enjoying the, the, the men having man chat? Yeah, you don't, you don't go ahead. Crack on. And thank you for your, your input. You're so welcome. Hmm? I said you're welcome. Okay, wonderful. I'll just double check. I thought you said something smart over there. No. I, I know how you stay in it, so. But yeah, we, we, we're done with fatherhood chat. Yeah, man. So yeah, I'll make sure all the Chris information is in the bio and that, so. Yeah, and I, I think it's important for dads, people that want to be dads soon, you know, go and check out the content, create that community, and hopefully we can, uh, we can raise a better generation. That That's, key? oh, that was good. Yeah? That was good. Yeah, Come sell on. it, man. Yeah, Bishop yeah. T.D. Jake's over here, I'll man. Give, I'll get you Young Figure of Fatherhood t-shirt as well. Cheese, like, merch. Come on. Oh, Come on. Uh, Fatherhood foes. Come on. It's got a nice ring. It's got a nice ring to it. Bro. Everyone's breathing up, bro. I don't know. I need to go check the sperm cut of Saturn, bro. <laughs> yeah, you need if you've got shooters or not, bro. bro. Have bro, a little scare real, one time, bro. Come on, man. And niggas eating too much Harry Bowls, bro. I need to figure this out, bro. Yeah, man. Have a little scare, bro. Don't do that. Spice up your life. Bro. <laughs> bro, at this age, I'm scared in a scare, bro. Bro, you get someone pregnant at this age, she, bro, bro, there's no conversation, bro. You gotta live your life on the edge, bro. Like faster. Bro, at this age, there's not even no conversation. There's, there's no, there's no, what are we doing? We're doing it. Yeah. It's right. done. Actually, I have one final thing to add in regards to fatherhood. Yeah, since I had a child, obviously, I told him I used a condom, but I, I use a condom. Um, he, Tony's Eddie, trying to get that Durex endorsement, boy. Yeah, he said condoms about 18 times. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't, mind a, I wouldn't mind a free still. <laughs> the Persante Paps. Yeah, come on, let them know. Anyway, nah, um, man. The Durex nah, don't nah. dad, let them know. Hey, listen, <laughs> last week I was talking about judging, yeah? Yeah. Babes, judge the Don, innit, if he pulls up in the Persante. Well, if you just gone, what's the, what's it, we've just gone clinic and that's what they're oh, doing. Yeah, on, yeah, but, yeah, but still, come man, on, man, go come shop. On, come on, man. Do a trade off. Persante. Well, go back and then trade the, I'm going to trade you 10 Persantes for two. Come two, back two with rest. designer doms, bro. I oh, don't, you're going to be like, like niggas that was having the designer face mask and that. Man got LV condoms. <laughs> <laughs> Durex, extra ribbed. Uh, you were saying before we really interrupt the girl. Oh piece. yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, it was another gem. This is how I live my life anyway. I just feel like, um, before I sleep with anyone, Oh, sorry. It's coming off the record. Chris Dove is coming out. <laughs> bro, look at him. Bro, 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 you know, Nick, Nick like, is right there, look, to start getting super spiritual. <laughs> Man, I, I pray over the punani. It's coming off the record. No. Um, um, I think everyone should just be extra con- conscious of who you're sleeping with. Basically. There ain't no fun in that, bro. What the fuck are you talking about, man? <laughs> Anyone, uh, don't come uh, over and start giving out that mature gospel, nah, bro. Nah, but the niggas do need to take ownership. Take over ownership the actions, of that. Actions. Take ownership. Oh, of so, that. so so we can't. So man can't sh- chat shit later about. Oh, my baby mum's crazy. You did that. Yeah, yeah, you okay. did that, man. You did that because these, these right now decisions you're gonna pay for later. Yeah. And you're, telling, you're telling, and, and you're telling and me, always this, you're telling me this. You ain't telling me all this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> oh. nah, that craziness you like now. That feistiness you like now, boy. I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna say risk it for a biscuit. You know? <laughs> Basically, you said do better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. your yeah. vetting, your vetting process needs to. Mm. Okay, yeah, cool. women vet too as well, innit? Because yeah, man. I mean, nah, <laughs> nah, nah. I mean, nah, nah. nah. nah, nah. They be letting I something mean, slip I mean, through the filter. Vet. You know? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Things are slipping through, but yeah, we're, we're good. We're good on the fatherhood chat. Yeah, yeah. we are. Should we get some music? Yeah, man. Kendrick Lamar's album. Yeah. I'm sorry if you released music last week. <laughs> Rough week, bro. Yeah. Like Rough week, bro. Don't don't drop on that day. Yeah. I've seen people, yeah, I've got, sorry, bro, I'm, I'm going to get to you next week, bro. Yeah, I heard Tory Lane's dropped. Ew. Sorry for that, man. Yeah, sorry for that, man. Yeah. We all listen to it, apart from, because I know Chris hasn't. Mr. Morale. Sorry. No, Chris, there's oh, okay. Chris, Chris to the right. Because you're looking at me. As for the Chris to the left, maybe you listen to Kendrick's album? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> bro, bro, do you want to send you back to Dubai? What's going, what's going on here? I've listened to half of it. Half of it? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a double disc album, so... Um, don't save her. Don't do that. Let's say this, let's uh, yeah, listen, you listen to, to Side A. Half. You listen to Side yeah, A. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Mr. Morale and the Big uh, the big Steppers. That's the one. I love the artwork. 
nice, simple, effective. Man announced another child on there. Just, you know, cold. He announced a lot of things on there. Yeah. Um, yeah, nah, d- listen. I thoroughly enjoyed the album. Can't mm. lie to you. Um, I, I really loved the album. From the start I, I don't know if Big Steppers is the first half or not I think it, Big Steppers is more of the first half than Mr. Morales is the first half if he's doing it that way if that's how we're looking at I'm with you because Mr. Morales it definitely feels because of the subject matter towards the latter part of the album yeah that's not Big Stepper energy to yeah, me yeah yeah like so you've got the first half and he's there's a lot of Big Stepper shit that he's saying on there mm. do you know what I mean like yeah. um um, what's the what's the one where he's like keep playing with me and I'll turn you into a song like that's that's on the first half yeah. he's talking about on father time he's talking about you know when when he saw that Kanye made back with Drake he was confused he didn't like, rate he, it yeah he didn't rate it so I'm like alright but I wanted him to lean into that a little bit more man like nah, I, for, I don't for, not, not them specifically but that kind of energy Give Big Sean a few more jabs and that, like, like, like. Do you know what? He was like, you know, don't get it confused. I'm still that nigga. Like, so, and then he went on to say that. Yeah. Um, Just to say that, like, rah, like, whatever you man are, are doing over there, I don't rate it. Yeah, whatever you man on, I'm not on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, a lot of that stuff in N95 as well, like, he's saying a lot of shit. The only, I think this album, yeah, is like a, is an accumulation of all the albums. You think so? Yeah. I think there's like something from for everyone on there because like I've noticed that there's there's Kendrick fans, there's Kendrick stands, there's different types of Kendrick fans. There's Ke- there's which Kendrick one, which one are you? I'm the Kendrick fan that didn't necessarily love to pimp a butterfly like everyone else. I accept that it's great, but it's not something that I went back to as as much as I did his you other albums. You weren't looking for that from him, I'm guessing. Uh, no, not, not necessarily that. It's just that it didn't really like grab me in a way that maybe Good Kid, Mad City, or even Damn. Like, there's a lot of Kendrick fans that love to pimp a butterfly, but don't like Damn. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so I feel like with this album, it's his final album. It's like um, the Avengers with Endgame. TV. It's like his Endgame. Yeah. So he's done after this. No, with with the label before with he that becomes, label, with, before like he goes They've done great things with that label, and he's done great things with TDE. Do you know what I mean? Like, so it's that final release, and I think that it's an amazing offering. Yeah. Um, and it just further like, I think a, a, a few episodes back you were saying that like you didn't like the fact that he had taken this long. Yeah, but we we kind of gave. Are you happy to that? with what he's given after that long wait? Mm, yeah. I would have wanted a few more bops, so that's just maybe kind of where I'm at in regards to how I'm listening to rap music at the minute. Yeah. But I am happy with that, especially because I said when he dropped the, the Heart Part 5, I was re- I was liking it to like having a heavy weekend, out late, drinking loads, eating crap, living mm. fast, and then Monday morning you reset and have a detox and go, yeah, I'm going to bang this ginger in the, in the juicer with the carrot, the orange, and I'm going to reset. It felt like that when he dropped that because yeah. it's like, as much as the dance plays a big part in regards to how we listen to music, there is a world outside of the dance that we that we also need to recognize. So when I'm talking about one in the box, that's like, that's where I'm at with rap at the minute. But I still I just I want I want I want messaging. I want to hear. Um, I love storytelling rap. Like we um, there's a meek we love for the club, but we also lo- love um, Tony story like. We love a certain, mm. there's certain things from other rappers that I want to hear in it. And yeah. Kendrick has that within him. So I want to hear the lyrics. I want to hear you, Brett. I want to hear you talk about your upbringing from a perspective of you're from a very like notorious violent area in terms of how you view the history of gangster rap in America, Compton, yeah. historically. But you kind of represent the guy that f- a little bit was watching from the window. You weren't overly active, but that's a different perspective as well, which we got on Good Kid Mad City. Yeah, like I'm the I'm the good you to a certain degree, but I, my cousins them are kind of crazy. Mm. Outside was mad. I had to navigate that, but I wasn't banging. But I still have a story to tell, and my perspective is yeah, needed. because you so, inherit because you inherit um, some of the things like you like know, it's like you, it's their mutual ends. They're too bad for the Neeks, 
but then too nicky for the bad boys. Mm. Where yeah. do you kind of sit? Yeah, and that's how I look at Kendrick sometimes Kendrick. you have to get involved. Yeah, you know, and, and those three smarts will help you navigate the area. Yeah, but also being kind of book smart allows you to navigate the other thing as well. So yeah, that's how I view Kendrick. And yeah, to answer your question, I am satisfied even with the long wait. Of course, that's maybe I would have won a few more bops, and that's also selfishly kind of for him just to kind of raise the profile of the album a little bit as well. Because you've got like markers like, okay, cool, we had a lead single or he's got this song that like we're going to probably play that, that's going to go off in it. That kind of just appeals to the masses and it just allows man to have a crazy extra run. But he's Kendrick, so it's going to be fine anyway. But Yeah, so I you're, gonna get, you're definitely going to get um, Die Hard, the song with Blast on the Hook. Yeah. Playing on the radio loads. Um, Purple Hearts. Um, Summer Walker and Ghostface, you're gonna get Summer that Walker's on verse on there. She's saying, "Bro, she's sliding. Like, how, how you call it love and you don't even eat ass?" I was like, "Oh, Summer, yeah, is, is, that, is, that, is that the energy we're on?" Yeah, yeah. She said, "Baby, baby, daddy's still on the line." Come on, talk, <laughs> shit, talk your shit, bro. Like, um, I think when you got certain artists that you call for a feature, and that artist is gonna come correct with the features, I think. Everyone that's featured on this project came correct. Taylor, Taylor Page, yeah, on um, we cried together. I thought that was a masterpiece. How they, like, performance wise, yeah, how they executed that, uh, amazing. Mm. Like, it's a toxic, it's it's a toxic relationship, bro. Like, and I feel like some may feel discomfort listening to that. Because of how like aggressive it it's is, a, it's, and it's, an, it's an art piece. It's an art piece, and it's yeah, representation it is, of it is. people. People do speak to each other like that. Exactly. So obviously, with them embodying that energy and and making it so real on a song, it just like for me, it sets like uh, an artist like Kendrick above because you know he's he's challenging that aspect and he's able to. I didn't even know Taylor did music. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and she's gone on and done that mm. and just blends into to Purple Hearts after that. So it's it's an album that is, that's got everything for me personally, um, produced well. Can you keep everyone happy though? Can you serve that many masters? I don't know. Um, but I just think uh, as an all round album, it's a, it's a very good album. I really, yeah. really highly. How do you feel about the presence of Kodak Black quite a lot on the album? Uh, if I'm going to be honest, I liked his contributions on that album. Yeah. I'm not a Kodak fan by any stretch. Um, but with how Kendrick used him, yeah. I liked it. Um, and I know that, you know, there was a lot of people that um, they left a bad taste in their mouth that he was a part of this project because of all the things that um his criminal history and yeah, stuff that he's had to plead guilty to with and that um, so history and stuff because you know it's when you when you're someone like a Kendrick and you l- lean into the maybe sometimes somewhat preachy yeah maybe something about like woke remember when he's talking about the stretch mark stuff and he got the backlash about that yeah, yeah the photoshop yeah the photoshop all that stuff so are you talking to us you're talking at us you then look funny in the light when in some people's mind um, remember that time when they said they were going to pull R. Kelly's music off Spotify and he was one of the big vocal people about it, innit? A lot of women didn't like that. Yeah. And I could understand it. I could understand t- his well, perspective. He was saying to take it off. Yeah, so you know, he was, he just was basically like, if I remember correctly, kind of calling that as disingenuous because it's like, is this person getting more attention because of their race as well? Because mm. at the time it was like, some of these rock bands were like, when their members had like, Peter the feeler charges mm. and like they weren't pulling their music down. And I think at the time it was, I don't know if they were trying to pull Arkeley's music down or take him off the playlist because the playlist give you the extra, extra visibility, mm. which is how you're you're in front of this playlist, that playlist, you get more streams. Of course, it's Arkeley, um, a legend, actually, you're going to get people listening to your music, but when you're in people's faces more and on the biggest pre- playlist, people are going to tune into you more. So are we, let's not extra promote a minute. And I think he was one of the vocal people that kind of pushed back against that. And at the time, I think we spoke about it on the podcast and as much as my man's done out here and the crimes are crazy, I do I do understand the perspective of if we're going to do that, let's do it all across the board. I know you guys are just doing it from a business perspective. Is it reactionary because of the time the documentary is out, all that stuff is happening. So, but when you are who you are and you represent what you're representing in your music, people can then hold you to account and be like, 
this doesn't kind of maybe fall in line with how we view you or how you represent yourself. Yeah. And then we get mm. the the song um, where he says his, his auntie's now, now a man. What's the song uh, again? Auntie um, Diaries. Auntie Diaries, isn't it? And Donnie says the F bomb like four or five times, isn't it? But he speaks from the perspective a, of one of Ramsey Maggots, you know. Um, swear. Yeah, yeah. But he's saying it from the perspective of how he was speaking at the time um, when he wasn't maybe disaware or I don't want to maybe an ally or a support of certain communities, isn't it? Mm. So I look at it as an art piece. He just speaks. time heavily used in hip hop, like in the early years. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? In like prime gangster rap era, you know? Um, yeah, you listen to, especially especially that um, um, West Coast rap. Yeah. You hear that in there all the time, you know? So, yeah. So he's talking about his um, aunt's transgender, innit? And just talking about that experience and, yeah. So, there's, I, yeah, there's a that, lot That of... I looked at of like, that was like the storytelling. That was the art piece for me. Um, and that was like I said, the big morale for me towards the end. That was a big step of energy. Yeah, like um, Mother I Sober. That's like, <laughs> that was That's That song's sad as hell, bro. I was like, wow, <laughs> like, you know. Um, Abuse, trauma. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Morale, like listening to Savior, like um, it was cold as well. Like I think he gave a lot in both sides of the album. Yeah. I think it ended strongly as well. Like, um, yeah, man. How Super do you feel pleased. about the? Because Chris hasn't, you know, interjected at any point because he hasn't listened to this album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we may, maybe we can have maybe this, this conversation if you and you can add if if you feel like you've got some stuff to say. How do you feel about maybe some of the naysayers where like it's clear my man can rap. That's mm. not up for debate. But it just might not be that wavy to listen to, or it doesn't give me that energy that I'm looking for. How do you feel about th- that kind of commentary around him? Let, the album? let them niggas be over there. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not by force. Yeah. He's still he, Mount Rushmore. He's still in a big three. Yeah. Like, whatever you lot say, like, wherever you, you know, if you want wave music all the time, then 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 just listen to that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not for you. I don't think it's, it's uh, because of all the Kendrick fans and every type of fan is going to be annoying to someone in it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, <laughs> it's coming like, out. The truth is coming like, out. In my mind, I was thinking, I was thinking oh, here they go again. The Kendrick here, fans. Here, yeah, here yeah. they go real, again. Real, real like, hip hop. Let exactly. them stay over there. Yeah, oh, ex- ex- okay, exactly. Okay, we will. So, there's, <laughs> so they're trying to come over there anyway. Yeah. <laughs> they ain't no hoes over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're trying to get all preach at me. So yeah, so you get that with, you get that with Drake fans as well. There's a lot yeah, of people that same, say man. Drake. You work Drake in extremes dons. online in here. Like, yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. works in extremes. You like who you like and you're going to defend them to the end, innit? But for me, I don't think, it doesn't affect me when people are saying it. For me personally, I'm like, you're missing out on great music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to listen to whoever, <laughs> yeah, whoever, then in, it's up to you. Wavy entirely answer. up to you. See, now, see, do you know what it is? I don't take that personally, but I know that it's that if you want to listen to that little connotation, just like that's why people will ask, they get defensive. I don't mind that because just like it is what it is. But, but you say that, no, but he, he asked me the to... no, but in t- like, he asked me the question: How do I feel about that's people that say? Right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if yeah, if you're asking me how yeah. I feel about people saying that, like, oh, you know, we don't want to listen to whatever he's got, then done, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Like, there is a snobbery in music, so there'll be a snobbery for my the 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 diehard real hip hop fans or Kendrick fans over there, where it's like, bro, with the other stuff beneath me, and there'll be the snobbery on the other end, where it's like, you man ain't you man ain't cool, you ain't getting no babes and that, because there is an argument if you're around the badders and you got the orcs, are you drawing for Kendrick? No, no, but you know, can I, let, let's stay here quickly. Quick, quick. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're around the baddies, yeah, of course you can. What Kendrick songs are you drawing for? It depends on the, no, 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 baddies that listen to Kendrick. Vibe. On the way to brunch, you listen to Kendrick. Yeah, on the way to the club, you listen well, to Kendrick. Well, bitch, don't kill my vibe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the way to brunch, on the way to church. I love, don't do that. I love Kendrick, by the way. So do that. But um, now, nah, do, do you think do you think it's because of social media that this is why it's got so bad? Yeah, it's it's, it's a loud minority. It's not like, but I don't want to ignore it. I think it's just good for the conversation. Mm. I think there is like. I'll be honest, bro. If I'm around the hoes, I ain't putting on Rakim. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Rakim Allah, one of the God MCs. I ain't putting on Big Daddy Kane. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> but why do you have to take it all the way there? <laughs> Let's take it back to the essence. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that, bro. Like, like people say the same thing about like Nas and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But we had Hema sitting there, like yeah. 
saying that. But she a whole tech babe. She, she was defending me, but as soon as we've got her on the couch, niggas are like, yo, what are you saying? Yeah. I'm like, bro, man, she listens to Nas. That's what you're saying. The, the man babe. them easily led. So if the babe suddenly like, they're flocking to Kendrick, the man them going to run over there. Is that what you're saying? No, nah, I like that, man. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, man. Nah, the flesh is weak, not, bro. It's, it's, it's we spoke not. about the vetting process earlier. The flesh nah, is weak, innit? Nah, so whenever the baby's like, man, I run over to it. I'm telling you, the baddies know good music. They do. And yeah, and women do like conscious, real hip, whatever, however you want to coin it. They do like, it's not just the wave stuff, but I do feel like that, that statement does, place, it bro. does ring true. Like if man has got the orcs, yeah, I'm trying to get lit, bro. There's a time and place, man. Like, I'm, imagine you come to my party yeah, and someone's like, yeah, let's turn up. Let's play some Kendrick. He's not that. Don't do 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 that. But well, what song would you play that? Imagine you're at my party, my birthday party. Just my bitch, don't kill my vibe. <laughs> you know, you know, I'd be silly, but I'd be silly. Like at the end of the day, uh, he's got songs that will go on a playlist. But there's a reason why, like, a, a lot of his albums are placed in such high regard, you know, in comparison to a lot of these niggas, because he produces you know, great albums that people can go back and reference. Do you know what is, the thing is, I agree with, I agree with that, I agree with that, but we need to also keep on the art is very subjective, right? It is. Like a lot of the films that um, win, win Oscars and stuff, they're not films that we would go and watch on a normal day. Like, they just happen to be acclaimed by people who have decided to be nah, viewed disagree. as the greats. Uh, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. That's fair Will enough. Smith won an Oscar f- um, for King Richard. Bear, one, bear people went out and got. Okay, okay, okay. W- that's one. Will Smith it. has been around since before I was born, and he's won one Oscar. Yeah, but he's been nominated. Like I said, films that win Oscars ordinarily you wouldn't go and watch. I did say that would ordinarily. Let's not go on my tangent. Well, yeah. Man. So it's just like um, and when you say you hold albums in high, I respect it. Like I can, he's talented. Yeah, but. I just wouldn't. But it's only it is. Like, it's, it's, like, art's very, very subjective. Under, it's it's very, very subjective, isn't it? I, so I do. I understand the, exactly. the argument. Yeah, like. Yeah, I don't um, think it's an argument. I, I put on this album. I heard Worldwide Steppers, and I was like, "This is some bullshit." Mm. Cool. Like whatever you're saying is cool. Yeah. But I don't want to. I'm skipping this. Yeah. Just I, I'm listening it. I'm listening mm. to it a few times when I'm listening to the album a few times, but. Once I've sat with the album, mm. yeah, that song is coming off. Yeah, because it was also a fine balance where like they're quite putting. That's the, the head, that's the Kendrick put, that I don't like. Putting the like, medicine in the candy, like just because you've got good messaging, mm. you know, that niggas like, oh yeah, I do Christian rap, bro. Don't slap, bro. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, <laughs> 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 no, like I, I hear you. I hear uh, like listen, big up the God thing and that, but brother, like <laughs> <laughs> this music don't slap. There, there has to still be a balance, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, there has yeah, to be, yeah, and yeah. and that is the maybe the tougher balance for the guys that do have a positive message where yeah. it's like it you depends, still have to appease. It? To, it's got to, like sonically, like that's one thing I do like about this that like. The musicality is great on there, isn't it? That's one thing that I think is cold about mm. about his album, isn't it? And his message is going to be, but sometimes you might have a slight miss where you might just want to do the rapping about rapping thing. And like I said, I might not want to hear that right now. Mm. So there will be some misses. But I think what he was speaking to earlier about like it being in high regard and kind of standing maybe the test of time is that a lot of this music we've the got The test like, of time? Bro, um, I still, I still listen to Good Kid Mad City now. Like, and in, t- in terms of like, is that standing the test of time? I thought you were talking like um like in 1992. No, but in in this day and age we live in now, yeah, everything is microwavable. That, that, so like, that, so for you us to still be listening to them with that, that album now, mm. that like is standing a ten year old, a ten year old. I'm sorry, you're speaking to. Yeah, going back to something that was made like ten years ago, and still enjoying it as much. Mm. Like that is yeah. Okay, I get what you're coming. Think about how many rappers you've listened to and have come out in that time period that haven't had many albums out, had a hot song for for a quick period or song or two. And they're just like nowhere to be seen. It so mm. you can. Uh, it's after he was speaking about it, where like you have to be careful as an artist. Where it might have been Vince Staples, probably. Cause I watch a lot of his interviews, and he's, he's a really good, mm. really good conversationist. Where he was talking about being careful about going and grabbing the bag and being in the club. You might yeah. a lot, a lot of the down south artists do when they come up from the streets and that they might go and get 40, 50 k in the club. That's their appearance for right now. But they can't necessarily do stadiums and do yeah. the do the, the 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 tour of the nation, go Europe, go across the world, and eventually, and and it dies. And eventually, you're not always, and it's always a young, a new young you sipping lean, that's got a better always. story than you, yeah. that's gonna come up and have a new song, and he'll be in a club now, and then you're kind of rubbed out, or your fees gone lower, but you can't tour, and you don't have a body of work, you don't have songs that are really gonna 
resonate. Mm. And to a degree, that grind is maybe a little bit harder because you're doing, trying to do four or five of those in a night, moving mm. around a lot, where if you've got the tour set up, and of course, if you're in business with the right people, like mm. someone like the big artists like Kendrick, J. Cole, and Drake can do, where Drake's gonna come in and do three nights. Mm. For you to do that, you have to be in business with the right people, the heavy hitters, the right tour people, mm. Live Nation, whoever, the right um, record label. You can move around and you ain't got to worry about being in a club every night because mm. that can also be very taxing. So it's just finding that balance and like the the rave, the club, however you want to term it, is a big part of our thing, but it's not the only part mm. because there's different settings. Like when I, when when albums like this come out, I want to play it when I'm cleaning, so I put on a certain speaker in my house. I might want to go for a walk because I've got my AirPods in. I might want to play it when I'm in the gym. You put it on in the car. There's different settings in it. Mm. I'll come here. There's times I'm here early and me and H should just be reasoning and they put the music on the big studio speakers. There's different settings for music. Mm. And of course, like you said, man, want to get lit, bro. <laughs> I can't lie to you. Man, man's in the club. I don't want to hear no Big Daddy K. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hear that. No, I think also like, these people want to shake their bum, bro. Put on the city goes. Do something, bro. Yeah, you're You want to see cheeks move, innit? You're very right that there's certain feelings that you want certain, some music to evoke. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because they, 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 they're, they're sad nigga hours, bro. Man, man, put, man, <laughs> man put a sad nigga hour playlist, bro. You're driving late yeah. night, listening to like some deep party next door cuts. Like you like you want to hear certain things in it. So yeah. there, there's a mood. And when I, when I when I'm in my, when it's like aggression, and you're trying to go have maybe in the gym, whatever. You might put on that drill playlist. Mm. There's different things for different times in it. So I think once you recognize that, it will be easy to deal with. Of course, yeah. art is very very subjective, and I don't I don't. I think there is like a core that it should be in regards to rap, hip hop, but the thing's got so broad and bigger now where like, I'm not mad at uh, some young youth if they look at their wave artists as lyrical. Mm. Cause some of those guys do say somewhat witty stuff and I can't say that my, I enjoyed, I enjoyed future lyrics here and there. Mm. I do have my core, which is maybe leans more to like a Kendrick style rapping, mm. but those guys still have something to offer as well. So. Yeah, absolutely man. Like um, I can never just say that because Sometimes, like the, there's the there's the accent barrier that makes people assume that these men are waffling because you're not. They're from down yeah, south. You're not necessarily catching what they're saying with the auto tune um, plastered all over it. But some of these men are saying some shit. But in terms of like um, you know the discussion here with this album, Kendrick has the ability to convey various different personalities well on songs I was saying that listening to Father Time and how he raps on there that's my favourite type of Kendrick yeah. like I'm here to rap no different voice this is my organic like I'm angry type Sebi let me said, rap Sebi said he does the helium thing I died when I saw that I was dying <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, he has been criticised for the different voices but he's, he's using your voice <clears throat> as an instrument and like trying to like find different personalities and play around with things and I'm not mad at rappers because like you might have been in a different creative space isn't mm. it? you might want to try a thing it doesn't always bang you know, like we've been people have been critical of J. Cole it'll be like brother let other people produce your stuff bro like you don't have to hog all the I beats I think it's it? good it's good when artists try new sounds and try new things because you, how else are you going to grow Yeah. how else are you going to grow how else are you going to improve even beyond the greatest artists in time their sound has actually evolved it's never been the same thing at the start. Yeah, and absolutely. At the finish. Absolutely, man. Never like, as you grow, like experiences as well. Like you know, you really get into your bag. Like mm. you know, sometimes listening to this album it makes me wonder about Kendrick's music collection. What is he listening to? Because he incorporates different types of sounds into his music. Um, but then you know, you still have songs on this album that remind you that I am a West Coast artist. That traditional West Coast, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why that's why I asked early like um, just about like trying to appease, trying to keep everybody happy. Like, can you successfully do it? Because you're speaking about like on Father Time, there's a certain Kendrick you like, like just kind of as close to his natural voice as possible. Mm. No different vocal inflections, no whiny voice, just rapping, just straight rap. You like that, but it might be the other person that likes Kendrick when he almost does the Eminem thing a little bit, mm. or does the um the helium thing, as Sebi would say, or leans into okay cool I'm a big rapper big artist I still need to deliver a big song mm. like we kind of got that but I think for me I think just my personal opinion closest to what somewhat the perfect balance of Kendrick is Good Kid Mad City where you're getting everything to a degree 
but I'm still I'm appeasing West Coast. I'm appeasing the purest hip hop. I'm appeasing the the business side of music where I need a hit, and he got them on there. You know, some people may argue a close representation of him is Section Eighty. So there's different Kendricks in it. So I think that's what, it's it's a gift in it to have that in it. So yeah, um, and I think at this point of his career, like he's not necessarily he's not chasing a hit. I think there's there's songs on the album that are just gonna go because it's good music and he's at that level. Um, you Don't just chilling in Ghana playing PS5 with the locals and I just chilling, bro. Yeah, um, and the same with Cole when he dropped off season. There wasn't like a, like a focus on the hit single. Bro, it's it's still like, a great it's one album. Of the dumbest consumers. Don't until it's the off season, bro. I'm chilling out, bro. I gave you the album. I'm going to go and relax, bro. Like, yeah. don't tell me to come and do no freestyles and hang out and that. I've given you loads of verses on this album. Let me go and relax in it. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I enjoyed the album. But I just think like, I want to have that conversation because I think there's a slightly wider conversation with Kendrick and it happens with the the people that lean more to the purest side of hip hop where it's like, okay, cool. What about the, 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 the big bang or what about the dance or the boring element as well? Like, you know, I don't know. I don't know if that's a problem with us, but I think it is. Turning up and being and enjoying is good as well. That's just me. Um, mm. You know, we've got- Do you think they're too, too focused on flexing? Yeah, um, and I don't. If if that's what you were searching for when he announced, he came to the wrong place. Yeah, he came. <laughs> you know, he clearly lost to Kendrick. Yeah, I mean, he he's just got other shit to say. Yeah, he he. There's little jots of flexes on there. Yeah, you know, even just like we were talking about generational curses. They were like, "Oh, you've broken the generational curse." On just a, from a on a on a money perspective, like you know, his. And he's putting members of his family on, you know, Baby Keem. He's, I think, he's gonna lead towards him um, when he fully launches the the PG, PG Lang. Label, yeah. PG Lang. No, I'm so, with it, man. I enjoyed it. So yeah. yeah, this is this a PSA, Chris? Go and listen to Kendrick's album, man. Go. I'll give go, it a go, try. Go, like go, said, go man, and cleanse your soul. I respect myself in it, and I just know that. Um, <laughs> 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 I respect, and I know that. Um, like you mentioned earlier, like um, when you're looking for a certain feeling know who to pick and I just know it's not Kendrick like I, off the top of my head I can't tell you I know more than three songs of his <laughs> like, in I, Vance's I, head he says it sucks to be you <laughs> <laughs> possibly possibly yeah maybe 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 mm. not but yeah maybe one day I'll have that because what happens as well is sometimes I could hear one song or watch something like for example a good example is Dave Chappelle Dave Chappelle I didn't find funny up until maybe like 2020 Jesus Christ yeah exactly then I, I watched one thing then I went back in time I was like nah this guy is funny so that could happen as well that could happen it's happen- it happened with uh, more artists was it it's happened with music as well where it's just like raw I've been missing out yeah I don't, it's so, like I don't um, music is is uh, is a beautiful thing because mm. it's so broad in itself do you know what I'm saying like there's there's a lot of people that are focused on like black music only and mm. then there's people that listen to everything. Do you know what I'm saying? Like music is good music is good music and you know well, whatever genre it is. Black people only space. Yeah, so <laughs> African only live stream, I hear you. Um but I'm just saying like, you know, there's different there's a different type of listener mm. and there's 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 artists that are out there that you may not have got initially, mm. but once they put it out there, it's there forever, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So Whenever you catch on to it, it's not a problem. That's another thing about art as well. It's a slight segue, but um, for people like that who don't want to, who maybe they sing their app or they just want to get in the studio or anything, like we will never get the chance to, but we'll never, we're never going to get the chance to appreciate what you can do if you don't put it out. Yeah. That's when Yeah, you studio art. rappers are annoying, bro. Release your music, bro. Pardon? Imagine, studio rappers are annoying. Imagine, uh, all, imagine all these dope pods are just kept on, on a hard drive. Yeah. And the thing is, is that once you submit it, it's out there. It's out there, yeah. You know, Man, you want it. response. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Do you know what or it lack is? lack of even. Do you know what it is? <laughs> and and right. certain artists, like, you know, um, are afraid to, you know, be themselves mm. because there's an open forum for people to criticize now um, in a way that there wasn't before. There's a lot of think pieces you know, like, and there's people like hip hop, for example, being the the number one genre in the world. 